Hi, I'm gonna establish that we have a quorum. And before I call the meeting together, um, I don't know who's there from Health Imperatives, but I so know Sue is in there. They're not, they're not in. Oh, they're not in yet. Yeah, yeah, no. I was just gonna. I thought we we're gonna establish quorum, and then I can let them in. Or would you like me to let them in right now? Well, let's let them in before okay. we start and see if they can be back. I'm meeting all. Oh my goodness. Hi, everybody. I'm looking to, before I start this meeting to see if um, the representatives from Health Imperatives and Suman in can come back in at 1030 versus now. Sure. Feel free to unmute. Right? Okay, perfect. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Jessica. Of course. Thanks for Sue? She got thumbs up. So she agrees. So you did thumbs up too? Yep. Okay. Fabby. Um, okay. As a preliminary matter, this is Dorothy Hertz, chair of the CRC. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipating on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Veronica? Here. Joanna? Here. Linda? Here. M and me? Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Jericho? Here. Anne? Here. Anticip uh, speakers, when I call your name, please speak in the affirmative. Uh, Allie? Here. Jeff? Here. Thank you, guys. Good, um, good morning. This is the open meeting of the CRC. It is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting of the CRC is conveyed by video conference of a Zoom app and is posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks might be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. We are now turning to first on the agenda, but before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective, clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. The chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, question, or motion. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in conversation with other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. Other, as far as public comment is, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote will be taken in roll call. Can I get an approval of the agenda? Second. Uh, Joanna? Aye. Veronica? Aye. Linda? Aye. Dorothy? Aye. Hi, Allie. You're muted, Allie. Hello, sorry. That's okay. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, hi, Jeff. Allie, it's nice to see you, even though I haven't seen you in so long. I've heard I talk know. to you. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet hi, everybody. Um, so we've invited you to come, and we had some questions on the quarterly reports. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that I got an email from uh, Allie, but Allie, if we can address everything, um, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, so, questions, everybody? Did everybody get this from the new one? Yes. Okay. Veronica, did you get this? Uh, I don't think so. 
Yeah. I didn't either. I think it went out in the email, did it not? Not that I noticed. That was the second quarter, yeah. 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 It was from February 17th. Yeah. Right. February yeah. 17th. Yeah. Okay. It was that long ago. All right. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I just pulled it up. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. going to do here then. So, um, does anybody have questions? I do. Okay, Linda. I just want to know what you're doing, where, how, and, and how many, and I'm confused. Okay. Sure. I think the, I think that just for the record, I think the paper does tell us how many. So, yeah, um, but I wanted to wear how and because you're not here. And well, we've had this discussion for many years about that. Well, physically. Okay, hold, on. hold on. Um, and if you have another question to go in so they can answer everything at once, I think it would be best. But Allie, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, I'm gonna let Joanna ask a question. So when I look at these um quarterly reports and they're for $21,000 and you're talking about serving two unique patients with one intake and 12 groups. How does that cost $21,000? Okay. Yep. That's the second question, Veronica. Do you have any? Not you can at the moment. Yeah, I've got it here. Okay. Not at the moment? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, Allie and Jeff, the floor is yours. Sure. So we are on island. Um, it's true we had a space that we did get um, rid of, but we had been providing groups up until uh, about January. So uh, for the first two quarters, we were providing groups. And so we do have someone on island that was there that was setting aside five hours, three days a week to provide these groups. Um, yes, we were not getting a lot of referrals. We did reach out to people. We did um, try to market this program. NAMI is still marketing this program, uh, but the referrals have been very few. As you can see, like you said, we had two patients, unfortunately. Um, so to your other point, I guess, about the cost is because this is a grant, we set aside that person's time, regardless of how many people are coming to the group or referrals, her time is set aside in case there are referrals so that she can do intakes and assessments. So her time is her time. I don't have her booked for anything else because I can't because her time was set aside for this program and this grant. So her job was the SOAP program as it is. Um, so that's where when you're looking at the 21,000, it doesn't matter whether we had one patient or 15 patients, it would always cost the same because the patient, the person providing the service is it's their time that we are paying for and that we are utilizing. Our hope obviously was that this program would gain, um, you know, kind of some speed, we'd be able to pick up patients and then we would no longer need this because we would be able to bill for patients and we would have enough patients that we would eventually be able to bill and it would be able to sustain itself. However, that is clearly not the case. So Allie, so yeah. what is this person doing with their time since they're not seeing patients? Right. So during that time, she was working to reach out and connect with people. She had been checking in with Dr. Lepre and other facilities. Um, she had done some marketing. She was doing a lot of program structure, um, group planning during that time. But I couldn't really use her for anything else, unfortunately. Allie, this is yeah. Veronica. Um, why do you think there are no clients? Yeah, I, you're having difficulty. Yeah, it's it's a it's. I mean, it is a small island. We obviously have a lot more patients off island, um, and the programs remain full. But it's a it's a larger group, um, a larger a larger pool to pull patients from. Um, I'm not sure, you know, it does take programs time to kind of get their foot in the door and begin to be known and get referrals, but uh, it really has been very slow on the island. 
I don't know if there's just not a large enough patient population to sustain this program. I mean, in order for us to be doing groups, it really needs to be five patients every time we do the group. And we've been unable to really build that at all. It's, I, I mean, based on the situation on Nantucket, I, I find that very hard to believe. Do you have some examples of what type of marketing this person was doing? Were they attending other events? Were they networking? Were they flyering? What were they doing for the community? Yeah, so, so they were um, networking is my understanding <clears throat> is, is when I speak with Emma, that is my understanding is that she was doing networking. And again, NAMI was doing marketing for soap. And according to Jackie, she was still doing that in print and on radio. I had reached out to a number of the colleagues as well, sending out email flyers and pamphlets. We were sending pamphlets to, um, to kind of providers. I guess I'm also um, concerned about how come you didn't reach out to us and talk to us about the, this problem, like before we are reading about it in the reports. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think it would be, you know, especially after two cycles of this happening, I think that the report is really lacking any context. Sure. Yeah. After the after the second cycle, to be honest, we've kind of met as a senior leadership team. And as I notified Dorothy, I think we've kind of said, you know, our time on Nantucket for this program has has ended. I think it's been met with, to be honest, um, not a lot of help and support. And I know that, you know, Having this grant from you guys is a show of support, but I feel like um, at many turns that we've been to, um, that it's been met with uh, with difficulty with Gosnold. And I think that that has led to a bit of this. And so with that, um, we are asking to, um, to end this grant first two quarters, but end it. We don't believe that it's sustainable there and we don't want to continue to take funding for something that cannot continue. Right. I knew I, everybody. I, I had had this discussion with them. Okay. okay. Just so everybody knew, and I've I, I've been in active discussion with Brian. Okay. In regards to it, and we're trying to work a way to, and I can discuss this when they when they're okay. off. Okay. But I, I have been actively working with Brian. Okay. To try to save that. Okay. Linda okay. has her hand up. Yeah. yeah. Um, Linda. Well, I have to agree with Joanna. As you know, this has been my problem with this all along. We're paying for something we're not getting. And mm -hmm. it's very difficult to justify in the community here that we are paying for something that doesn't happen. And so I'm glad to see that we're going to terminate this before somebody blows the whistle on us. Mm -hmm. Well, I, well, well Linda, gonna, it's, I, wait, wait, I, I'm going to speak for a minute, okay? Um, I don't think it's about blowing a whistle on us. I will, I do want to say that I have um, been lucky enough to speak to the people who are participating in this program, mm -hmm. who have said it is the only one of them has been in and out of rehab facilities for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it is the first program that's actually worked. So with that being I said- I get that, I get that Dorothy, but it's hard to justify the cost. Linda, do not interrupt, please. So what I'm trying to say is that just so everybody knows, it has benefited and that should be acknowledged, okay? Mm -hmm. I also understand that there's been um, a few things that have come up that, you know, in my research and my discussions with Ali and Jeff have made me feel a little bit like um, we could do better as a community in working with, um, when we feel when we feel sort of apprehensive about something and working better with it or an organization. Um, and so for that, I, I it's clearly that has been an issue. Um, and not necessarily the CRC, but it's clearly been an issue. And I think we have to acknowledge that. So um Ali has, we have been back and forth in conversations, um, which I appreciate the open and honesty, Ali, that you have had in the conversations over the last, you know, week and a half um, in coming. And I appreciate that Gosnold has felt um, 
is taking this move. I feel bad that it didn't work out. And I feel bad that um, at some point uh, it wasn't endorsed more by some of the uh, providers on the island, that it wasn't pushed to go into the different programs. Um, so any program like this being leaving the island is a loss for the island. Uh, what I do understand is that they will continue to do the patients that they have through telehealth mm -hmm. um, that have already established with them. So they will not be lost within the program, which is really nice to hear that they'll be able to continue that. Um, so I just wanted to make that. I want that to be very clear. Um, and. And does anybody else have? I mean, I appreciate your comments, Dorothy, but I do think that even after the first quarter, like some communication back to us that they no, needed our, that they need, I, excuse me, it's oh, John Balash. Okay. So let me just see Great. if he wants to come in. Hello, John. Hello. Thank you very much, sir. We're going to admit you right now. Okay. Okay. There you go, John. You're in. That's my bad. I didn't see him. Good morning. John, uh, sorry John, to be late. You... No, that's okay. Thank you, John, for joining us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, everybody. But uh, Joanna, please go on. Well, just what, what, see yeah. sitting there. I didn't want to. It's not okay. Be a part of it. It's okay. Uh, I think what you know. I appreciate <laughs> your comment, and I I think that you know we're all trying to serve a purpose here, and I think that the the piece about this that I am most concerned about is that if if Gosnell needed more support, and certainly after the first quarter when they saw two patients, twelve groups, not a lot of activity, to have reached out to us and said, hey. Can you help us make this work? Can you connect us to people who can help us make this work? Because we're finding out about this too far after the fact to make a difference. And so it feels like a missed opportunity. On our on our end. Yeah, yeah. And and it's also a forty, you know, two thousand dollar missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm appreciative that you were able to help somebody. That's great, right? But we I think could have helped support you if you had let us know. I think that's a lesson for us too. It's a lesson for us too, is okay. to reach out. Maybe we have to be more, more proactive, proactive on our end too. Yep. Potentially, um, rather than just submitting a April report is we have quarterly, Zooms. even if it's Zooms, yep. that people come in and give us an update. In person I think it's a good idea. Yeah. In writing is one story, you get more detail in, in the first text. text. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a very good idea. So we'll learn from this also. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a learning curve for everybody. Um, Jeff, did you have anything to say? No, I think you covered it. Okay. Um, Nobody. Um, John, did you have any? I think you came in a little late on this. I'm afraid so. So. So what's happened is that Gosnell just presented, you know, that um, their quarterly reports are as is because they have seen two two clients. Um, they haven't gotten many referrals, and they feel that the program hasn't been able to get a foot really in the door here. So they're pulling their contract for, they've asked to um, leave their contract with the town um, as of for the, for the third and fourth quarter. And um, what I said to everybody is that I've had discussions with um, Brian already about this. And so we're trying to work, we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do. I think that's pretty much where we're at. Where we're at in a nutshell. Um, and what and what came out of this is the fact that from now on, we will invite people to come in on the quarterly reports so that we are more aware of what's going on and can help if they're in a situation like this. Okay, that's what that's, that's the not, summary. Would, I, would well, that be a correct summary, everybody? Yes. 
Okay. Um, does anybody have anything else to say to Allie or Jeff? Okay, um, Allie and Jeff, I appreciate your time in coming today. Um, Allie, I appreciate uh, the open conversations we've been having. And um, I do look forward to seeing SOAP do more if they can, even through their telehealth here. Um, yeah, th thank you again for, you know, we are sorry to be leaving, um, but like I had said to you, it will be available virtually. We will not pull that. Um, we will continue to market it as virtual um, for patients. Uh, we just won't have it in person. Okay. So that will continue. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything thank else you so I'm... much? Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Bye. Ooh. That is really disappointing. So what happens? Linda has her hand up. Linda? I don't have my hand up. Oh, it's maybe it's my hand. Sorry. <laughs> Modern technology, gotta love it. <laughs> so what happens to the money that they didn't use? Nominally, it goes back into the general fund. We can't. No, 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 no. So, excuse me. <laughs> um, let me just say goodbye to this. Um, so right now, what we're trying to do is see what we can do because it happened before the end of the fiscal year and we've been announced. Mm -hmm. Brian's looking into legally what we can do to save the money. Okay whether or not that money will be available for that or whether that money might be the groundwork for the beginning of the next one. That's what I'm wondering. Is if it's offset is something that yeah. we're looking at. Okay. So um it's that's where it is. He didn't, you know, it's been back and forth as mm -hmm. to it was first I said hypothetically what would happen. And uh we went through a hypothetical conversation. And then yesterday I said to him, look, they're gonna they're gonna pull. Um what what is the next move? Where do we stand financially? Where you know what happens with that money? And this is what it, so it could be. Did he say that anything about a technical amendment? And that's an Article Eight. So here's my understanding of what could potentially happen because we've done this before at the FinCon. If there's unused money that go, if they have they give us a list of it, we go through it and we vote on it. So if this wasn't included in that list, we can go back and revote the motion, or there can be a technical amendment at the town meeting. Well, there's going to be a technical amendment for Article Eight already, which which is for us to get the 175. Which is for us to get the 175. Okay. It's going to be a technical amendment to Article Eight, right. not Article right. Nine. Right. And the Board of Selectmen, somebody from the Board of Selectmen, has to get up and make that motion. Yes. From what I understand, FinCom is going to not want the motion to go through. Okay. The Board of Selectmen has to, and then um, if it doesn't happen, if somebody else calls it, like after, so the Board of Selectmen has to call it. Nobody on the floor can call it. Okay. The Board of Selectmen has to call it. Correct. The Board of Selectmen calls it. If it gets fought back, somebody has to know where the source the money can come from in order to identify putting this money on the floor. For this, um, for the one seventy five, for the one seventy five, it has to come from a source. Um, and as you know, what um, is Brian suggesting? Brian is suggesting that he will be one to say he doesn't. He's going to vote with FinCom, but he said that he and Libby will present to do their best to find the money on the floor because well, the they have like forty thousand. How much? What is the balance? Was eighty seven five last year? So they have there's there's about forty thousand we have okay. available that can go from that from this discuss into could possibly be the kickoff because it was human service money, mm -hmm. you know, or for this grant <laughs> that it could possibly go in and be kicked off as the starting funds for yep. for the program to start July first, and okay, yeah. I'll get it in a minute. I'm, I'm answering the question. Know. And then the following to go um, 
if if it doesn't pass then to go into another warrant in, in November. Okay. So there's a bunch of different things right. available to do it. Mm -hmm. um, right now is that Brian was going to look into what it was. And this was until we just got official notification, you know, like officially all of us that this was their intent. Mm -hmm. um, now Brian will proceed to go ahead. Mm -hmm. And Linda, yes. As Joanna knows, and having run budgets for decades myself in the town, your money doesn't carry over. It goes away at the end of the fiscal year. Um, the only one in the town, really, other than these uh, revolving funds and the enterprise funds, that carries over is CPC. We're not in the same boat as the Community Preservation Committee, which carries over everything. So I'm <laughs> questioning whether it carries. Can I finish, please? I'm questioning whether it the forty grand would just go away, as Je as Jericho said, back into the black hole. No. Because it is encumbered funds. It's not something like the other run, the other ones that go over. It's very rare to have your funding go over without going back into the general fund. And then we have to go back again and get it back again. But, but it's what already, we do with what we do at CPC when we have unused funds every year, we put in a separate warrant article that then the people have to obviously give us a letter formally giving up the funds and then we put an actual warrant article in at the same time we're getting the new funds for the fiscal year we put a warrant article in to get back the funds that people didn't use they never finished the project or they had extra money i don't know if that has to happen here where a separate warrant article goes in for the 40 grand get it back i i believe um joanna's going to comment on this but i believe right now that brian was going to re-figure this out and then tell us how it can be used, but yeah. Joanna. Well, so uh, what, Linda, this year, what we did was we voted um, on an article that dealt with, I don't know, several, several amounts of dollars in different budgets that would go back to basically free cash, right? Okay. In the sense that they weren't used. And so I'm thinking that th we didn't have to vote them into free cash. We could have directed them to somewhere else potentially. But say, say for example, one of the, one of the things was salary the salary line at our island home right because they've used consultants mm -hmm. right they had money in the salary salary line and it got returned right so there were other examples of this there were a bunch of capital projects that had balances that got returned so it was a cleanup right but at the same time i i you know this is the first time this has ever happened to crc where there was money returned to us Yes, where money was returned. Now, it's not the first time that full grants were not used. It's the first time that we're knowing it prior to the end of the year right. that the full grant okay. was not used. Right. There's a big difference there. Yeah. Okay. Which actually, if in, if like in other circumstances, like last year with Fairwinds, had we known about that small amount of money that was left over, it could have rolled into this year's money. Right. right. But we didn't know it until it was too late. Right. So this way with this, there's we can plan for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can be we mm -hmm. can be a step ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what Brian's trying to figure he, out. He will figure this out. I'm confident in that. And I think it's a, probably a solid idea to either um make it available towards the 175, and then we could vote the 175 in November. I mean, there'll be some better way to do this. Right. But in terms of identifying a funding source for the 175 on the on the floor of town meeting. I would assume it would be free cash. Yeah. So I'm just trying to educate myself here. Mm -hmm. Just I read the warrant and I didn't find the 175. And that was my question. I didn't see where that was identified. I see where our other funds haven't been identified. So now you, you just explained that There'll be a it's, a different, mm -hmm. it's a different process. Yeah, correct. Right. And and they're still pretty mad at us about it. Okay, but the select board will make that uh, motion. Yeah. And what happens then after that? Because that's I'm, I'm trying to find. How. Well, the select board will have to tell them where they feel the money should come from too. Mm -hmm. But if the, if it's denied, then somebody on anybody on the floor right. would have to then identify where the money could come from. Who gets cut? What gets cut? So th th that's just a planning. Mm -hmm. session of how that's going to go right okay all right so is it possible that um at the end of this 
town meeting. We don't have 175,000 for this next project that we're gonna be talking about. And we wind up with less money. It's possible. It's possible. And there's also a possibility that we, it does, and we have to move it to November. November's town floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are all possibilities. But what I doubt is going to happen is that we would be denied use of this forty thousand dollars. I would agree with you on that. Yeah, I think that they would at least let us start with that. Yeah, I would okay. agree. And I would say that then on town floor it would end up being that we're asking for one thirty yes. five or whatever. Right. Whatever. I would agree. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yes. That's what I think. Right. I think that that I agree. It was his first initial intake to me was, well, this could be the start of money for July first for for this RFP if it okay. if it happens. Because I have, a, I have a gut feeling that there will be groundswell support for the from, 175. for the 175 yeah. from the, the general public. I, I my gut tells me that. But it still has to be where's that money identified and how are we going to get it. So but that would put some attention onto it to make sure that money is found. I think the only way that that money is going to be voted upon on down, town floor is if we have our act together when we, we yeah, are ready. That's we know what we're doing. Right. It's a plan. We need plan. Right. We, we need to have everything in place. And a plan for, for 175 and what how 175 will be used? I don't I don't think so. I think it will, I think to Dorothy's point, we'll end up asking for 135 because mm -hmm. they'll direct, there'll be a technical amendment to deal with this money. The technical amendments, I don't think, then comes voting on them until May. After? No, right before. Oh. We have a we have a meeting that deals with all of these sort of outside issues that got dusted mm -hmm. up during this time. And that happens on May 2nd. We meet with the select board and we review all the technical amendments and we prepare for the town meeting. Sarah Elder's there and we have all the conversations about where are the difficulties in the, in right. the procedural elements of right. what we're about to do. Okay. So then as a procedural question, assuming the vote happens in the November meeting, the funds are released immediately immediately from there. So the RFP in November could be not from from November. It could be but it could be either. So so the thing is that they can give us the money to start with and put a technical amendment to start it to then go into they'll the, have to come back to us and ask us if that's okay. Right. Right. So the but technical then, amendment would potentially free up the forty thousand dollars left over from the. I think that's going to happen anyway. So that's going to happen regardless of what happens with the other ask. I think the the issue is going to be: is there a way? Where's the? Are they going to get behind the one thirty five? They'll figure okay. out a way to give us the forty. I'm pretty confident in that. Would be silly not to, right? I think that his intention would be yes. to just to for it to be the groundwork. Yes. For what we're asking for, mm -hmm. right? They're really being. Um, yeah, and and it could pass on the town floor in May. Yes. This could pass with it already them acknowledging that there's forty. We're only asking for one thirty five because we found the forty thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it could also be that it gets flagged and we bring it back up in November. Yeah, as a warrant article in November. Mm -hmm. So we have one, we have two chances to get it. And there's right some now. other strategy things that can be done. Okay. Right. So, but I think that they're going to, Brian will have to come back to you and say, we, we, we're proposing a technical amendment. Here's how we want to deal with the 40. Here's how it will affect the 175. Here's what we're suggesting as a technical amendment. The FinCom will have to vote on that. The FinCom will like that there's $40,000 mm -hmm. available, mm -hmm. right? Regardless of the fact that they didn't support that because it was an out of sequence situation for them. Okay. Which they're really upset about. <laughs> Is is the issue more out of sequence and procedure? Yes, than support of yeah, that's one of okay. their big All huge. Right. Well, huge. Um, that's what money people are supposed to do. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> uh, I, it wasn't proper protocol according to all the ways it happened, but I I said it was also, you know. If we knew the if we knew the issue was right. there, I mean we tend to say that we all knew the issue, that we had an issue. It, it's next. Yeah. We can get a he and I get in great debates over it. So I'm just <laughs> I'm 
and God would say at the end, thank God we love each other. Yeah, it would be terrible. Mm -hmm. well, Brian's a fantastic guy, and I, I don't perceive for a minute that he's not supportive of this mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the conceptual place. Right, right. But it's his job mm -hmm. and the FinCon's job to um, keep the monies and make sure that it's being handled properly. And, yes. Right. So, and there's also the the degree of question is how much is government responsible for social services? But that that's, that's a quite, that's been going a, on for the entire time I've been on the phone. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying that that is one of the ones that comes back at me <laughs> my, all the my time. My blood pressure just went up on that. You know, I'm just saying it, it, mine goes up every time. So it's like <laughs> it, it's been an open debate, and it was again an open debate on this. So, okay, okay moving forward. Since we now know what that is and where our steps are going to be on that, there is the technical amendment. So everybody's prepared. I was under the understanding it could be Article 9, it was Article 8 that was going to be all um, for the technical amendment. So everybody should be aware of that. It's Article 8. Um, and so now we have to discuss this RFP. And just so everybody knows, at 10 30, um, we have coming in is uh, health imperatives, addiction solutions, um, fair winds, and NAMI. They all will be present at 1030 to discuss this RFP with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that, after that, what I would like to do is have another meeting with all the other could possibly be stakeholders or people involved in this meeting, all the other the schools, the mm -hmm. church groups, the you name it. Mm -hmm. they anyone don't have who to touches watch. children. Anybody that touches, yeah. yeah, anybody under 25, right? Yeah. Um so in touches the lives of children. <laughs> the lives of children. <laughs> <laughs> we had to clarify that. that. That's crazy for the record. So okay. <laughs> So one of the things that I really would like to see is that we, in doing the RFP, that we do it with the basis of being able to put it underneath some form of other grant at a further time. So that there's a grant process, monies out there somewhere that supports the idea mm -hmm. and that is already out there. So I found that there's, so the Tower Foundation does have a community collaboration one which is, it's preventive and, and um, it's everything we're looking at. It's education, it's uh, intervention and prevention, but in, in a community-based <coughs> program mm -hmm. that, and they want it to span as far out as it can, which is, and their numbers aren't, you have to really get the information once you have something together for them to give you the information more on the grant. Mm -hmm. And then there was um, the drug-free communities um, program. There's a one-year program. There's a six-year program. Uh, the one-year program is 125,000 ceiling. The six-year program is 125,000 a year ceiling program too. Mm -hmm. um, and Project Aware from uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health is a, another funding source. Um, these are just the three that I pulled up. And then the Tower Foundation, which is what I pulled up last night. Sorry, guys, I've just been. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. Um, so, mm -hmm. so, so you, you, as part of the RFP, you want there to be a strategy for ongoing funding. What I want is that the way we put together this RFP, it fits within other grant requirement requirements, so that it can get funding. To continue, do you know what I mean? If we write our own RFP that doesn't fit in within one, if we can show yeah. that it's the well, first so year's made it, I understand what you're saying. But I, I guess maybe I was thinking about taking a slightly different approach, and I think we're talking about the same thing at coming at it from two different places. So one of the thoughts that I had, since we're kind of saying that we want, we're only asking for the 175 one time, mm -hmm. is that we would figure out where 175 could come from for like the next say two years beyond it. So thinking of this as a three-year cycle, right? And so what I was thinking of is, okay, the town gives us the 175 the first year. The second year, 
um, and I'm making this up as I go. Yeah. The town gives us fifty thousand dollars. We ask Dragonfly for fifty thousand dollars because they raise money for mental health and um, mental health, say. And then I think I know a private funder that we could ask for fifty thousand dollars. So that's one hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So I think if we could demonstrate and speak to this when we get up at the town meeting, mm -hmm. this would be very strong. So we're proving that it's not just words. We've got we line up beyond, where we've gone right? beyond. We have a three-year plan, yeah. right? Because one and done doesn't work for anybody. Mm -hmm. No, right? it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, one mm -hmm. and done is just, but we have a three-year mm -hmm. plan. And I even think that we should go back to the school, to Beth, and say, we want 25000 from your budget. We want you to pay for $25,000 of this one seventy five Because I know they have money in their budget. They just couldn't identify what pocket it was in. But I feel like then they become a stakeholder, right? But and then we have right. a private donor. We'll ask Dragonfly because they raise money specifically for mental health issues and support. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I'm sure there are others, right? And I think that these grants could be great. Yeah, I mean, we need we need them. Uh, the big question that they've had for me is that we kept saying it was a one time ask of the town of Nantucket. Sure. Um, and so that has been a big question was, you know, how can you be honest that this is going to be a one time request? Well, I think we could say that we sat down and we figured out a funding strategy for these next three years. I will try to get us a pledge for fifty thousand dollars a year from somebody for the next two years. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that really shows some good effort on oh, our that's part. I'm not but, disagreeing. Yeah, I'm yeah. not disagreeing with yeah. you at all. I'm just. All right. I'm going to step back a second because I'm trying to think of the organization of this. Would it be CRC that would be um, seeking out future funding? Or is there a, another organization that will be formed from the RFP group, like this core group we're talking of. Well, and they take and and it becomes um uh, a, a new a new group that is and it's not the CRC doing this. Did, did I, well, I think the that was dicey. Yeah, I think with with the town <clears throat> so a lot of these grants can go to town entities. Yeah. Okay. So the town entity can oh get the money. Mm -hmm. um, because they are public and private nonprofit, and the public, a lot of them, Berkshire has a big one going on. They got a million two grant and uh, a million two a year, and the town um, out in Great Barrington, they they hold the grant. They hold the grant. Yep. And I, I actually think it's Berkshire County that holds the grant, and they delegate the money throughout the different organizations to what they're doing. My hope is that with this, that we can get these four organizations to actually, each one of them has such great strengths, right? But they also have a weakness. And, but the, another organization has that strength. And I believe if we can get the four of them working together to, and using and saying, okay, here, this is our goal, right? This is what, th this is to do a healthy community for kids. Mm -hmm. My strength is, you know, we, we can work on this and we can take on this and we can take on this. Mm -hmm. And the four of them together are coming in and working on it. And then all those other entities, like Joanna, I haven't been able to tell you this, but a lot of private nonprofits have reached out, like smaller ones and people wanting to do like mentorships or, right. or something. Right. And Great. This is what I would want. Yeah. All right. This is internships, what, is, mentorships. I agree. This is what it's all discovery about. for kids so they know where they fit and they don't know what they like unless they're exposed. I agree. And, and I think some of it is also getting also even the town more on board of, you know, um, that maybe the tennis courts are open and you don't charge to have somebody down there teaching a kid to play tennis a couple you know a couple of days a week right so, you know that there's on yeah. my side i'm just curious how the rfp process like does that mean we're soliciting grants from tennis instructors like no 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 no, no. collaborative things take a lot no, of time we, we don't we their hope the hope is that by this major amount, like us working with the bigger group on some of the mental health and wellness mm -hmm. that these other organizations where, like, 
small example. My grandson went to the science fair last week. Um, and he, somebody was there with, uh, maybe it was Linda Lauren, and they gave out binoculars. And my daughter calls me, she goes, I have been outside all day Sunday, because all he wants to do is look at the birds. But it's getting them young mm -hmm. and finding different things that shows them that there's so much more available and that you don't have to fit into part of the wellness is, is not fitting, having to fit into the soccer teams, the football teams, the swim teams, the drama club. But the fact that, you know, somebody after the meeting we had, she's a florist and mm -hmm. she has a 5013C. What? Yeah, I'll get it in one second. And she um, came out and she was like, I, I want to get involved. I want to work with somebody because that's, awesome. I didn't have anything growing up. And then somebody that does, that actually does horticulture came and said, Hey, I want to do something. Right. right. You know, but and then you're, what you're talking about is fostering the connection to nature, which is part of the thing that has been lost. Correct. But I do think two other things. I also think that if we don't want to go back to the town and say, we want $50,000 each of these other years, we could ask the community foundation for it. Right. They already do tower grants. They're already working on a collective behavioral health system. So that would, could be another funding source. But the other piece where I think that we have to really focus on finding additional funding is because we are um, majority minority and it's very unusual economic circumstance on Nantucket, mm -hmm. I would suspect that there are grants that address that directly. I have looked. Um, they have a lot of grants that, that do like behavioral health uh, and Linda, I see your hand, and I'm gonna call you in one second. Um, they have, uh, they support like behavioral health facilities. Mm -hmm. um, there were none that I could find that were helping it engage into a community. And I look, I went through literally you, a thousand. Do you have it on Grant Watch? No, I actually did it on. I did Department of Mental Health, uh, Mass Department, U.S. Government. Uh, I'm, um, I'm happy to do a little research on that. Then, if you because would, I've got, I have a couple subscriptions to some. Okay. I have some different resources. Yeah. Because of my own job. So. Could you give me a list of those that I can potentially sign up for? Yes, Thank I you. could easily. Okay, Linda. I've had my hand up for a while, and everybody's cross talking. But when I try, I get shut down. So I have one yeah. thing to say. I think Joanna finding somebody, uh, an angel from outside is a great idea. I'm leery about accepting outside grants. The selectmen have to accept gifts, not us. The other thing is, is that I think if we can help these uh, entities develop programs, Joanna's angel can di give directly to those programs without having the town have to get involved. It could be something like a matching grant. If we have the 175 and we give 25 grand to a program that has been developed, then Joanna's Angel can give the matching grant, which is an easier way for them to do a, a deduction to that same entity. So that's all I have to say. I think it's a great idea. I mean, there are a lot of different ways of looking at this. It's coming up with something, you know, that can prove that we're not just asking for funds and have nothing right. behind us right right which is and, and i think the real leadership role here for us is to bring all the people together mm -hmm. and start and facilitate the conversation and to help get funding right mm -hmm. like we made a stand we asked for more money right mm -hmm. like that was step one i think now the real job for us is to provide leadership to all these groups and help to facilitate a way for them to come together and talk about these issues and figure out a collective program to your point where everybody participates in something and then we can make the group larger and invite some of these people who've reached out to you because I agree and I also think that also because of the other work that I'm involved with this situation with connecting kids to nature is and the example that you shared is really critical mm -hmm. because that I, I mean I can speak to that from my own experience with my own kids and how much time they spend surfing mm -hmm. right which is better than being on the Xbox right. or on their phone right. um, and it's a real it's a real thing right right surfing and there's I mean there's yeah, fishing there's, there's, there's geocaching exactly there's, there's so, right. so many ways to engage with nature. You know, nature is one thing but there are also other other yeah. opportunities yeah. that kids don't know about and it's on the island there right. are people that will offer their expertise in either mentorships or internships but I guess I'm going back to the original um, uh, part of our meeting is 
this is going to take our group um, a, a very tight oversee of what a is of developing work. because yes. um, we already have been um, presented by the select board. Well, what are what what's going to be the out the outcome? Right. You know, how are you going to prove this? Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to ride herd on all of this. Um, yeah. A little more tightly. Yeah, tightly. I know what the word I was looking for is self regulation, right? right? So, if we can teach, teach kids how mm -hmm. to self regulate through mm -hmm. connecting with nature or right. other activities, right. then they're less inclined to turn to substance. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's connecting to outside, but also connecting to their own self, self awareness and who am I and sense of worth. Sense of worth. Yeah, how do I fit in? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing. That's what happens. The kids yeah. don't feel like they fit in. A yeah. lot of them. Right? And we have 55% of the kid community who also don't, doesn't speak English really well and mm -hmm. whose parents struggle to provide for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that that's mm -hmm. a real thing for us to deal with. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think a lot of people struggle not to provide. So it's not, I, I think a lot of them do actually really well too. So I think we have a whole base of our community. Yes. Not it doesn't it is not cultural that struggles to survive here. It's everybody. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot to do. Um, so let's go into the RFP that we're having them come in. And uh, and what we want to see in this RFP. Um, and uh, Jericho started one um, very different approach to I think the two that were discussed here. Yeah, right. It's a lot. Different. My approach was that we are only asking for money once. We should be evaluating RFPs based on the in infrastructure investment and things that will last for multiple years. Because building a um, to me building a collective group that will be able to adequately address and manage these funds by November is unrealistic. Yes. In We're what about way? To get significantly busier over the course of the next three or four months. The so to build a new set of RFPs that will align with tower grants, et cetera, et cetera, with no guarantee that those money, like I think the angel investor idea is significantly more realistic, but we're still asking people to build a three-year plan with no promise, with no guarantee of funding past the first year. Um, I, I think that partnering with organizations like CFN, who's already doing a lot of work in this field, will greatly shore that up. But then how do we evaluate grants? If, are they going to give us the money and allow us to evaluate the grants? Or are they going to want to participate in that? And if they want to participate in that, who sits on the who's CRC? Who's the well, funder? CFN, or the school, if they're going to contribute, they're going to want to say and how- Why are we going to the community foundation? Hold on, one, because I thought that they could definitely give us some money. And they money, already, but they're not going to oversee this. No, no. But, and that's so then, so, so then you're asking people to contribute to a pool of money that will allocate without them getting representation in that allocation. We need to have specific programs for them to give money to. It can't just be piling up money into a fund without us having an idea or the entities that we want to give the money to having an idea of how to, they've created a program. Yeah, here it is. And here's your brick and mortar. And so we'll give you money for those programs. I'm not sure we're going to be able to get a lot of money just thrown into a pot. And I'm, I'm not trying to poo poo this idea. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what you're saying, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about this over the period of, over the period of the next three years, right? Because I think that that is realistic. And I think that one of the things we need to do, and I think this will help our situation with the town meeting if we're able to articulate this, is to have a vision statement, right? To mm -hmm. say, here are three or four sentences about what we hope to accomplish and how it gets measured. And I think we as a group need to come up with that. And that's the guiding where that's what it, the operational principle of the RFP, right? So here's what the vision is. And I think we do have to extend it beyond one year. But I think we have to say in the RFP, we secure, we're, we're, we are able to secure funding for one year. As part of this RFP, you have to agree to participate in, in other fundraising activities. Because I think that for this to really be sustainable, you, we can't rely on the town to give us money every year. Right. No. And I think it makes us much mm -hmm. stronger if we're able to actually start a program that is able to take care of itself ongoing. Right? Seed and money, whether, basically seed money. Yes. Right. 
Because this one grant here mm -hmm. is worth this, the, uh, <clears throat> The grant from I think John yeah. has his John has his hand up for a while. Hey John, sorry. John just call, talk. You can just Okay. Talk. I'm sorry. I have to leave for a dentist appointment. So <laughs> okay, uh, okay. I'd rather be doing this than going to the dentist. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Okay. Good luck with the dentist, John. Thank John. Well, so I it's only a cleaning, but who who knows? You go for a cleaning and they find a filling. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thanks. We still have corn, right? Yes, yeah, okay. we still have corn. So, so this one, this one itself. So this is what, you know, these things are what I was looking at too. Because this one, it's, it has a very broad description, mm -hmm. but it's about community-based mm -hmm. efforts. It's $38 million divided between 21 sectors. So, you know, you're not saying that you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. But when we look at these things, we shouldn't look at it and say, we're not going to try. Right. Right. you know, to get all these kind of funding. So when we look at these, the, the basis of all of them and looking at them, and Joanna, this is what I'm getting at, is the description of the programs basically are almost all the same. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of elaborate writing of what they want. It's about doing a community-based programs for mental health, substance abuse that are broad. And if you read it, it's all about being... So I'm going to ask a different question. So if if I was able to ask a grant writing professional mm -hmm. to donate her time mm -hmm. to supporting us and helping us with this process, would that be valuable? So why don't we do that? I'm to sure Arlene would be interested. Arlene would be interested probably in doing it for that because she likes this the particular venue. Arlene O'Reilly. She, she, I, 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 with her. We could, uh, yes, and I, I know Arlene, that would be great, but I also know somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I think that we, it would benefit us mm -hmm. from working. So with, she writes the RFP. She will help us write the RFP. Okay. And I also think. So just put her on and let's just do it. You don't have to, let's do it. I think the more we can get from somebody that is in the process, the so better every, off we are. Everything's aligning right, right. from the beginning. So then would we have a, a session with our group here mm -hmm. with her? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, and she can help. But we have to do it quickly. Okay, fine. Because we just because our time is very okay. limited. Okay. But that would be phenomenal. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, Linda, do you agree? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Linda, I don't think you have to mute unless you have stuff going on there, so you can be active. It's Um, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's, do we need to vote on this? Yes. We're going to vote on you doing that. Okay. Okay. I can um, make a motion that we seek a volunteer grant writer mm -hmm. um, to help with the process of developing our RFP for our youth behavioral health um, grant. Excellent motion. Okay. I second it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Veronica. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Joanna. Aye. Linda. What are you asking me? Okay. Okay. I got sort of lost in that conversation. Well, no, okay. uh, two things. We just made a motion for a, um, and it's been seconded. And the emotion was that we see a, Volunteer. volunteer to help with yeah, the grant writing. Yes. Okay. So yay, Linda's yay. And right. Linda, the yay. other thing we said is that you should just leave, um, unless you have something else going on in the background, there's no reason that no, you No, I've got leave. Evans running around here, so I, I, I just mute it. Okay. Okay. And you have to say, you have to go. Oh, yes. Okay. And yes. Because otherwise, you're on the core. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have, so until then, Mm -hmm. which we will have to, you'll have to reach out and yeah. let us know as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, with these people coming in, we just sort of like to get to feel with them, talk to them about it, give them our idea of what we want to do mm -hmm. and get some feedback. Everybody mm -hmm. has been very, yes, I want to do it. 
Okay. So it's very positive feedback from mm -hmm. absolutely everybody. And they're all willing to do a collaboration with each other mm -hmm. because the benefits for them are so, yes. So are we thinking that we, so these people, are we considering these four organizations to be like the primary stakeholders mm -hmm. in this process? Mm -hmm. So I think that I, I want to hear from them today, obviously, mm -hmm. but what if we invited them and we had another meeting, you know, and it was like a long, a little bit longer of a meeting and we included them in the vision statement. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I think it would be great to have the community buy in. And then we have the vision statement. We can demonstrate that we've done this. We can say, and we've done it before the town meeting. We can have the RFP ready for the town meeting. We could actually even issue it in all likelihood because today is March, what, 29th? We have about six weeks to get yeah. this on our roof. So yeah. we have to post it for two weeks. The RFP or the meeting? RFPs. The RFPs. Okay. So what's the backup deadline for that? Because let's make a timeline, right? Well, we're here so that we can tell the folks on. Well, it's going to depend on when you can get your grand person in here. I hope I can do it next week. Okay. If so we are, we're having a meeting next Wednesday at nine. I, I don't think we've set well, one up. I don't think we've we set can. that. And because actually Wednesdays at nine work for me. Oh, it does. And I would prefer to be able to be here in person with you. Yeah, it's good because I think we need it. Uh, and I think that. Um, well, oh, I can't next Wednesday at nine. I'm sorry. I have a doctor's appointment on the Okay. Day. Okay, so let me look at my schedule. I am, I'm gone. Okay. All right, now don't laugh. Person. So what are the hard endpoints in this timeline? I think this is where I think we, this is a very important exercise for us right now to do yeah. is to identify the timeline. Right. So, so I'm pulling up my yeah, 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 calendar. Just like everybody knows calendar. Right, that's doing so it. So what about the 12th then? <laughs> is next, that too late though? Well, let's work back so from. You're getting closer to town meeting, and I think we the sooner yeah. the better here. All right. So the sixth is the town meeting. So if we have to have the RFP out for two weeks, then we back up to let's go to April. And we have to be able to time to review, et cetera. Right. One week. So, so two weeks. So two weeks would be April 22nd. So if we were finished with it by the 15th, that would really be ideal because that gives us a week before it has to get posted. But it has to be posted for, Linda, how many days does it have to be posted? Well, it's usually two weeks and wait eight days, but this is a two weeks and there's a deadline. I mean, Jericho just did it for the other thing, but it's two weeks in a row and usually you wait eight days, but that's for um, ZBA planning board, things like that. So I'm not sure what if it applies to this. Cannabis, what have we That doing? was the same process, the same time period for cannabis. It's two weeks of being posted, but I don't think it it, it can go longer than that. We don't want it to go longer oh, yeah. than that. We don't want to go longer. Do you have to have those Why? one week of waiting after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two so, so it's two three it, has weeks to be process. Posted, it has to be posted in two consecutive two consecutive issues of the inquiry mirror and then a week long period afterwards. I generally go for eight days to give a single extra day. So then we the twenty first. Yeah. So if we get it in the paper on the 6th, we get it in the paper on the 13th, and then we meet on the 21st, and, you know, the deadline is the 21st, we meet on the 24th, but at least we're doing it before we get to town meeting. So I'm, I'm just curious, why do we want it to run? Do we just want to have a, a stack of The RFP in has front of to us? run beforehand, and what we want to do is prove that we've come up to, to with, so we were told we don't have anything. We don't have anything. So what we have to do is have the RFP in place and stakeholders that want to be involved in it. Yeah. yeah. When we go, so we show that we've done off. something. We better show that we've actually accomplished something. Yeah. Would it not be better to do an RFI at this stage, or like request for interest in this to get so that you yes. don't you're not getting a whole stack of very very quickly thrown together together RFPs? Like, yes. I, I, like generally, the way we've done this in both the behavioral health initiative and then with the RA, the uh, rural vaccine equity initiative, is that we, you know, don't, um, you know, get to get interest before we act, before somebody commits to writing a full write up from the RFP. If we have a complete RFP in process, then that gives people more time to a learn about the grant and b write compelling applications for. Okay, it. so I wasn't okay. necessarily thinking we would get applications before the town meeting, but I was thinking that the RFP would be ready to go out 
Absolutely. Uh, I, but I, I think that they would want to see how many people have interest in it and what they're yes. coming for. Well, because this is what I yeah. Just the RFI is the best way to go here because then we know if there's yes. actual interest out there. So yeah. an RFI does not need to be posted for two consecutive weeks and with, right. a, with a one week waiting period. We can disseminate that to everyone ahead of the thing on individual levels. We can be reaching out to individual people providing individual services. Well, I don't. I, I want us to just put it in the paper. I don't want us like. You gotta. Have, I mean. What? Well, when you don't normally solicit it, you put it out, don't you? An RFI? It's not a normal, the whole point of this grant is it's not a normal grant. Like, I, I, I don't understand no, what we want. R, RFI, is it, do we normally go out to people or does it have to go in the paper? I mean, the do RFIs, we normally solicit them? RFIs do not have to go out into the paper. An RFI is a, is a semi-official request for interest in a grant before we know all of the things about it. Like, you know, but I think we have the to paper guys, but they don't have the same legal stature of right. a regular public notice. So we can put a blurb in the paper for sure and say we're seeking um, requests for interest in this X, Y and Z, which we have to come up with the X, Y and Z. It doesn't have to be elaborate. And then you have given, you know, please reply by uh, the 14th or the 21st or whatever. 21st is the middle of school vacation week, but the 14th. Put it in next week, and then we see what kind of interest is out there. So the first step is meeting with the volunteer grant writer, really developing our mission statement and that core of what we see. And then that becomes part of the request for information. Um, the request for information is not going to go out next week. We're going to have right. to find the time. I think next week, if we can find the time to meet with the grant person. Right. And then after that, I think we find the time to meet in person with these four organizations and do a visioning workshop. Right. Okay. We come out with a vision statement. And then I think we put out the RFI and we post an informational meeting. If you want to come learn about what we're trying to do, we'll have a meeting and you know, have some snacks and some coffee mm -hmm. and see who from the community shows up and wants to be involved. Yeah. And then Very I think the press time. Yeah, but that. that'll have to happen before May 6th. Right. Yeah. Those right. things. And as long as I think we have an RFP by May 6th ready to go, we're in great shape. Because okay. we could be able to show all the people who submitted RFIs, an attendance sheet of all the people who came to the informational meeting, a copy of our vision statement, and then all this stuff at the town meeting can be read into the record, mm -hmm. right? Like it can be presented. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like you have a really solid base mm -hmm. for what it is we're trying to roll out. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Linda? I think that works. We just have to be very mindful of the, uh, time. the fast approaching time because we okay, got school so vacation week in the middle of that whole thing. Yeah. So we don't have this week. Let's go to next week. So is there a time that to the next week is hard to April? Yeah, I know it's hard to believe. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the only time I'm not available is Tuesday is rough for me. Otherwise anything is possible. Is I would like to leave this meeting with an idea of what the next four or five meetings are so yes, I can schedule yes, them out so I, I don't, agree. so I know that there's time no time conflicts. I would like to be able to have a complete RFP by town meeting, but I don't think it's reasonable to expect all of the nonprofits on the island to A, become aware of a new grant opportunity and B, write a good grant before town meeting. No, uh, they so can, the RFI is great. It. So let's let's just we, go for the dates right now. Yes, because we can give the RFIs and community foundation, and they'll put it out on their listserv. Yep. Okay, so next week, let's identify a time. Well, um, Joanna, I I can do Friday. I could do Tuesday afternoon. Okay. Tuesday Friday afternoon. is Good Friday. Seventh is Good Friday. Okay, so let's try for Tuesday afternoon. Okay. What time does works for folks? It should be Tuesday. I don't do Tuesdays normally because I have HDC at four o'clock, but if it's earlier in the day, I can do it. One o'clock? Yeah. It has it's on Tuesdays. Oh, and it's passports. Oh, so passports. Yeah. Yeah. There can't be any meetings. Well, I think. Unless you want to do it, Jericho. I mean, I'll do, I mean, I can do it when you can't make it, so it should be all right. So what about what about one thirty on Tuesday? Yeah. One thirty Tuesday. I can't before. do one. This Tuesday okay. coming up. Okay, yeah. so we'll all right. Time. Yeah. Oh wait a minute. What's the time? One thirty on Tuesday the fourth. 
Okay. And I will try to get the grant writer for that day. Okay. Okay, so if they now, are not available, do we want to back up? If they are not available, I'll come back to you right away. Okay. Okay, so let's just not go there yet. Yeah, I think okay. we can find okay. something so, even if they're not there. So yeah. we have April 4th. Now hang on a second. So it's 1 30 on Tuesday the 4th. Yep. All okay, right, so on. then, <clears throat> then are you available on Monday the 10th for us to invite everybody the stakeholders back in? Yes. Are you available Monday the 10th? Yeah, except between 12 and 1. Are you available Monday the 10th? Uh, I am, but not anywhere near 4 o'clock. I have planning board. Okay, so we can do morning, guys. Can you do morning? morning I, can do. I can't do anything till 11. All right. But I think we should block two hours. Okay, can we start at 1? I could start at 1. I will not be able to attend. You have okay, to be Anne will be here. I have to be at, I got the MBHI leadership meeting. Okay. That's so going two, two weeks ahead. Okay. So what It'll are we be. doing now? What date? Back at one o'clock. This would be like the visioning workshop. So it would be one to three. If it's one to three, I can meet for the first 30 minutes. I'll do my presentation at MBHI and I'll join as soon as I can. Okay. Okay. So what time is that? One o'clock on the 10th? April 10th. Yeah. The middle okay. of the day stuff is tough for me because I'm at the office usually. Uh, it's tough for everybody. I think. I mean, but I have to come home to get on the computer. Well, just come to the meeting. Here, don't come home. April well, 13th. Either way, I have to leave where I'm at. All right. So That's, what are we doing after that? Then you get school vacation week that whole following week and Patriots Day uh, is the 17th. We, if we do that, was there a possibility that we could? Um, Why don't we meet again that week? April That's 13th. what I'm asking. Huh? 13th that's Thursday. what I had down April 13th but it would have to be morning because we don't have her okay for right now that's I can't do the, the I can't do the 13th I have zoning board at one o'clock unless it's really early that day so can I we do the morning on the 13th I can do nine I cannot do nine I have a standing 10 o'clock meeting on Thursdays but I could do 11 what about Wednesday I could do Wednesday or I could do Friday let me see what date that is <clears throat> sorry I could do, I'm not available at noon on April 12th. Yeah, I have a doctor's appointment on April 12th at noon. What about 9 o'clock on the 12th? I could do 9. Could you, I thought you said you had a standing. No, that's Wednesdays. 12th is, uh, 12th is a Wednesday. 13th is. Oh, we're looking at 13th. Oh, we're talking the 13th. Okay. Yeah. 13th at 9 a.m.? Yeah. That's Thursday. And that'll be the day that we would put together the RFI. Yeah. The problem is it's not going to be able to, it can go out via email to people. It will not be posted until the 20th in the paper, but that's okay. It's okay because it's not it's legal. We're just giving everybody notice. Yeah. And then we have to meet again as we get feedback before we go to town meeting. So the last weekend in April before Daffy. Daffy's the 29th. Daffy's 29th. So 27. Daffy, is that late? It's not the 22nd, 23rd? 27th is good. You can come in. Come on in, Matt. Have a seat. Yeah. That's okay. okay. Are, you sure? Are you sure Daffy's the 29th and 30th? 100%. Yes, that's not usually the case. No, it 100%, is. 100%, Linda. 28th and 30th. Wow. That's yeah. late this year. It is late. Yeah. Yeah, it is late, but it's, it's, it's real. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Liz. How are you? Yeah. So that was always so, away that weekend. Or April 13th, last okay. April 13th is the last. Could we meet on the 20th or is that school vacation? That is week? school vacation. School week. vacation week. Okay, can we do the 27th or no. the 25th? I will be away. I have the um, the state fundraising conference is in Boston on Wednesday the 26th. We okay. Are 24, you not available on the 24th? 24th is Monday. I could do Monday. Okay. okay. What time? I could do any time after 11. One o'clock on Monday the 24th? Sure. One o'clock? April 24th, one o'clock. And, yep. that, and that's when we re review the RFIs. RFIs. Yeah. And we get ready for our presentation at the town meeting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do we have to have the RFP? It'll be written done that day. On uh, so on the twenty first or. I think that that will be something we would be working on. I still think we're going we're gonna to need to have another meeting the following week. I think so as well. Strategy. When do we want to have a final Town date? meeting is on the 6th. Yeah, the technical amendments will be dealt with on Tuesday the 2nd. So we should we should meet after Tuesday so we know what we're dealing with. Okay, so, so the 3rd? Sure. Oh, wait, I don't know if I can. Hold on. Oh, I, that's the Earth Day Summit. Sorry. So then the hard stop on editing and the actual official document will be ready. I cannot be here on the third. Okay. okay. That week between Tuesday the second and this town meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do have one other thought, but I'll come back to it in a second. So, so sorry guys, thanks for bearing with us here. What about what about Friday the fifth? No, what about okay. five minutes? I there. get ready. I have to be ready for town meeting at that day. I can't do that. The fourth. I have too many articles on there. Okay, the fourth maybe late in the day, because I, I know I have something in the morning. All right, what about like three o'clock on the fourth? That's okay, Linda. What's that May fourth? I'd rather not that week at all. But if that's the only oh, date, that's the date. That's the we date have we have. So let's go three o'clock. And that's May fourth. Right? May fourth. Yeah. Okay. So now we have a timeline. Um, the only other thought that I had is what if we uh, sent out a survey that had just a few questions? Like, what if we developed a survey in advance of the organizations that we currently fund or who have previously applied to us and just ask some baseline questions? Because that way we would have data. Yeah, I think we could do like a three question spectrum answer. Um, I think five questions. Five questions. <laughs> <laughs> five questions um spectrum answer with mm -hmm. gauge like your expected interest in this what money value you'd be requesting roughly with a couple of options well, no, so, so, so. money values no no no, 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 no. How, how about this how about <laughs> it's sort of get the juices flowing yeah, that's yeah, what it we is. want that's all. We yeah. want it but why don't every why does not veronica dorothy myself and linda mm -hmm. and and Jericho and Ann, if you have any input why don't we each come up with three questions that we would feel strongly would be on the survey and then circulate them, right? Just send them to Ann. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Okay. By before next week when we meet. Mm -hmm. So next week is the fourth. So they have to be at Ann. They cannot go to anybody else. So we right. have homework. You can go to me as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we can't. We, we can't, can't do it. <laughs> All right, plus three questions for okay. us today. And due date. Let's have them be to... And why don't we get them to you by Friday? Yes, this Friday. Friday. Yes. yes. Which is... Um, 31st. Yeah. I am going to admit Emily Gold as well. Okay. Hey guys, why don't you do me a favor? Um, we would feel more comfortable if you joined us around here. We didn't want to stop. You're never interrupting us. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. How are you too? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Between <laughs> 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 good. I know that was good. That's, that's exactly. We made some progress. Yes. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's a difference, I believe, when we're in presence than when we're not. Yes. Um, I think so too. Hi, Emily. Thanks for coming back in. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you uh, doing this. No problem. You did. There you go. Okay. Um, I don't know if Sue's coming back in or not. So I'm going to have everybody introduce. Okay. You meant Liz was here. She was here with addiction solutions. Yeah, but we've never. Um, so, um, I'm just going to have everybody like introduce themselves so that we can, and then we'll go from there. Um, and Emily, since you're Emily, here's the one thing we're going to ask you to do. Um, I think your music is playing. Yeah. This, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Emily, because this is going to be. Um, 
we we do really well the CRC in open discussion. Yeah. Um, and so what we would really like is I'm not going to ask anybody to mic themselves. Um, I think that we know enough to not have to be um, hand raised. I think it'll open up, have a much better dialogue going in, into what we want. Okay. Um, so please don't feel that you have to mute unless you have something in the background you don't want us to hear. Okay. Perfect. And, uh, for joining. Okay. And is Karen? Hi. Hi. How is everyone? Good. Welcome. Um, we're just telling everybody that we actually feel that you don't have to mute yourself out um, if you don't want to, if you don't have any noise in the background, because we'd okay. sort of like to get a discussion going where um, hands sometimes don't get noticed when we're in the middle of a discussion. Okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. So and I'm going to ask you, just because we are on Zoom, that everybody identify themselves and then and where what organization you're with as we go on, okay? And I'm going to start with the two ladies that are, are joining us um, online via Zoom. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Gold. I'm the Director of Medical Services at Health Imperatives, and I'm glad to be here. Just want to let you know I'm sick and I'm in a sweatshirt, so I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Latimer. I'm the Regional Director of Operations for our Sexual and Reproductive Health Program for Health Imperatives for the Cape and the Islands. Okay. Um, Amanda? Oh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Amanda. I am the Clinical Director at Fairwinds. Hi, I'm Michael Kozork, um, former superintendent <laughs> of schools. Now work for our house as the program director, the program for teens, and I'm on the board of Addiction Solutions. Okay. I'm Joanna Roach. I'm on the contract review committee. I'm the representative from finance committee. In my real life, I'm the executive <laughs> director of the Mariah Mitchell Association, uh, and I serve on the finance committee and on the coastal resiliency committee as well. Hi, I'm Liz McCusker. I am on the board of Addiction Solutions, and I work a little for Great Point Properties. I didn't know that. Oh, I was in retirement. That's <laughs> money needed. Uh, I'm Dorothy Hertz. I'm the chair of the Contract Review Committee. I'm Ann Medina, and I work for Human Services. I'm Laura Burnett, and I'm on the board of Addiction Solutions. And my other life is I run ACKFM. Cohog Country, Daybreak, Nantucket, and Nantucket about town. Awesome. I'm Elise Norton, and I am the program director for Alliance for Substance Abuse Prevention. I'm Veronica Bolchik. I'm on the Council for Human Services and CRC. Uh, I'm Jared O'Mealy, uh, Human Services for the town of Nantucket. Okay, fabulous. Um, so as everybody knows, we have presented. You want me to introduce myself? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Since I'm the quorum, uh, <laughs> Linda Williams, member at large, and a bunch of stuff, and on council on aging, and a whole concom, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And, and she's on the contract review committee. Okay. Yeah, and we just, we just got uh, Sue as well. Oh, okay, oh, good. Hey, Sue. Hello. Hi, Sue. Um, if you want to just introduce yourself and, and what organization you're here with, and we're telling everybody they do not have to mute unless they have noise in the background so that you can be an active part of the conversation. Uh, I am Sue Minton, and I am just here as a member of the public. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So what we did was um, there was a concern brought on by one of our members about what's been happening at the schools and clearly the issues that the children are having. And we felt that there was maybe a cry for help and maybe it was our job to find a way to get some funding to address maybe a community-wide effort to work with everybody um, under the age of 25 in the community to sort of with their mental health and well-being. And so this is what the basis of our grant is. Um, and why we've called you guys in is that we really believe that if we can get an active collaboration and an active one going on between the four major entities that really oversee um, the end result that we don't want you, we don't want the children at your programs. Basically that's what we're saying, <laughs> okay? So we wanna find a way to work to keep you out them out of the programs. 
And we think the best way to do that is to have a collaborative effort where actually everybody who has, because everybody has great talents, but they're all a little bit different. Yeah. And if we can bring all those talents into one entity and work together with a strategy, that maybe we can do amazing things within the community. And so that's why we brought you here, because we think that you all have a valuable tool to bring forward on the table for us. Um, and so that's basically that's you know that's an oversight of what we're what we're we're hoping you know um clearly there's an issue right and there has been an issue for a long time we can't deny that but now it's really um it's really showing its face in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. um and, and and some of the issues maybe at the school are related to social media as well and so these are some of the things that we're looking at is is there a community based way of uh, finding a better wellness within somebody that social media isn't what they're on all the time, but they're engaging in life again, right? And engaging in what we have available around us. And part of what part of what we'd like to see, or what I would like to see, is to get everybody back in touch with what we have out here, because we have some amazing things. They just seem to be inaccessible to a lot of kids, and we want to find a way to them to understand. Now, after I presented. Um, to the board of selectmen, um, I had people come out to me in the hall and, and said, hey, I, you know, one of them was a florist. And she goes, I just opened a 5013C in floristry. I would love to work with teenagers, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody else in horticulture. So our idea is to sort of get that feeling back in the community that, you know, you might not fit on a team mm -hmm. or in a drama or whatever, but you fit. And there's mm -hmm. somewhere you fit. And there's somewhere where you can find an okay place to be that you're okay um and so that's basically what we're and we're sort of asking you guys to come in with us um and work on this um so do you have um since you're a little ahead of us obviously this is a prevention and um an educational uh, mental health issue with the children to make them recognize there's not a need to go astray or, mm -hmm. or on the bad side. Do you have an idea of how you see this playing out? Is this something where someone comes into the school? Is this a program out of the school? What do you? What is your thoughts at this point? Our vision is it's the whole community. So it's not okay. just the public school because the public okay. school is only one little entity within our, our whole town, right? We have we have two we have two very strong private schools within the community right. who are all active members of the community as well. Right. Um, we have church groups. We have sports programs. Uh, we want to try to make it like not only accessible and um, multicultural. We want it to be culturally competent program, mm -hmm. which is very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and we want. We want everybody. There's people over 20 that are not in school. Right. We need to reach out to the people that are, aren't in school as well. Um, and clearly, you know, there's a group that's being missed in that age group mm -hmm. that we have to be able to reach out to that age group mm -hmm. too and make things more accessible. Um, so when you say they're not in school, you're saying those who have graduated from high school but are not going continuing on to school Correct. that are here okay. yeah, they, and they, and they could, could be in college, college. They, could, okay. they, could they could be in college they could not be in college there are people right. that are doing tech work there are people that right. are back here that didn't make it to school you know didn't chose not to go to college mm -hmm. but there's a lot that's hard for them to to be involved mm -hmm. and amanda or no john okay. my, you got, my you had your hand i'm oh, sorry <laughs> i saw the hand like this sorry i was trying um, to so first of all i don't speak for the schools anyway and right. so I want to make that clear, and and I'm I don't want to say disappointed. I think it's unfortunate that a school representative isn't part of this conversation because we don't want to talk about what we're going to do in the schools without the schools saying. Well, we're talking about community. Okay, right. This right. is really this, this is right. about this community. Is not a school okay. program. So our house is was started because of uh, what Pauline and I saw as the same problem in the community that has um, become exacerbated by the pandemic. You know, clearly it ramped up to another um, level. And I, um, I was saying to someone a few minutes ago, 
part of the problem with, with the substance piece, and I agree with you, it's far greater than the substance issue. The, the social media is, you know, cause and effect, it's hard, it's hard to say, but um, the, what's interesting is that 10 years ago, 12 years ago, we had a substance abuse provider in the school. Mm -hmm. And that went away because the federal grant that, that paid for that decreased. It was safe and drug-free schools. And that decreased as the problem was increasing. <laughs> and it made no sense, but that's our federal government, you know, that worked. And so um, we weren't able to continue to fund that. And I think that anything that we do, even though we're focused on the high school, it has to start in the middle school or earlier. Well, we want to start and, at age zero. Like we right? are zero. Yeah. We are, I mean, we are preschool. Right. We want it. But I, it's a community base. But I, I bristle sometimes, at, and this group isn't doing this, but I bristle when people talk about um, what the schools aren't doing or what the schools need to do. Because this problem is parenting. Mm -hmm. There, We have some wonderful parents wonderful parents but their job is getting harder and harder because of the group that's not parenting mm -hmm. and it, it's now and, and i hate to separate it into good parents and bad parents because that's not fair you don't have to do that on my yeah. part <laughs> no, no 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 i'm, I'm just saying that it's it, when, when you're trying to do everything and your child is pushing back yeah that nobody hard. else is nobody else's parent is doing that I just I'm I'm going to disagree with it's that hard. because I yeah. think that things yeah. happen whether you're a good parent or a bad parent. Yeah, I would agree. It's where you I fit agree. in. It's where somebody fits in and where they find their self worth. Sometimes but within the community that they're living. I'd like to say that I would have been thinking a lot about what Michael's saying in that um, one one thing we're not doing for parents is like conversations about how to have conversations with your kids. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. So right. We're telling them what the dangers are. We're telling them what to watch for. They're telling, we're telling them why it's bad for their kids, yeah. but we're not telling them how to talk to their kids about it. I agree. Like how to have those conversations that are really hard conversations to have, but that's maybe not what we're here right. talking right. about. Today. But, but I just want to say, I am not talking about good parents and bad no, parents. No, I know you're not. I was trying I'm to be just... clear <laughs> right. in that. What right. I'm saying is- It's education it's and maybe- part yes. Yeah, maybe yes. it may to be beyond that I know that we're focusing on zero to 25 but parents and family yes. are a big part of this yes. and educating families in how to recognize and and help and be part of this partnership it's not our main focus but it could be an outgrowth right. of an education I'm, right. I'm getting those terms. I think there's a, I mean just from a clinical standpoint, I mean, there's a lot of parents that see that their kids are involved in marijuana, alcohol, and stuff. And, and they come to the clinicians and they're like, how do we, like the ladies are saying, how do we have that conversation? I think it's also a struggle with the fact that marijuana has been legalized in Massachusetts. Like we have two dispensaries on the island. You know, there's a lot of kids that have been struggling through the pandemic, including adults, and people are using marijuana as an alternative to kind of help with the anxiety and the depression. And, you know, some people are very against medication, you know, and the nice thing is for everyone that has like five psych providers that are very well versed in kids and adults. And sometimes, you know, give, and I've heard parents actually saying, I'm going to give my child marijuana because that's going to help with their anxiety because I don't want them to be on XYZ meds, you know, but it's counterintuitive. And I think the hard thing is also is just the genetic piece. Like, you know, like there's a lot of families, like including my family, that has a genetic component to addiction. And it starts, it doesn't matter when you start. And, you know, I think we really have to normalize, you know, and I hear, you know, it's not just the schools. I mean, we all play a part in this in the community, but I think um, there's so many kids that are struggling with this. I mean, I was talking to somebody who's, you know, a teacher at the school and she was saying, you know, it's, you got to start at like sixth grade. You know, these kids are like selling vapes to each other. And I was like, oh my God, you know, and then it's getting worse as they get older. And sometimes they're self-medicating because they just can't deal with the feelings there. You know, they don't have the tools to be able to deal mm -hmm. with the feelings. And I think that, um, you know, the other thing is what are the consequences? Like, you know, from what I understand is that, you know, kids are getting suspended. 
you know, like if you're told that you're suspended, you're probably like, great, I can go home and yeah. watch play video games. <laughs> and yeah. and yeah. it's and like, what can we do to I, teach? I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I, I feel like there are peers with, I feel like there are groups of kids who mm -hmm. are trying to help other kids not do this. I think the kids are very aware. Yeah. No, no, mm -hmm. I think they're aware, but I'm just saying. With the punishment, I mean, my kids would be horrified if they got yeah. suspended. But then there's some kids that are getting suspended multiple times from what I understand, and it's not mm -hmm. having an impact. So what are other ways, not from a punitive standpoint, that we can help them understand, like if you're caught smoking more marijuana at school or wherever, you know, what are the consequences? Like, you know, we have a peer recovery coaching program. These are individuals with lived experience that are in recovery and they've had their own journey at, you know, whatever ages. And does it make sense to have a child like spend time with somebody who's in recovery, just kind of learn what it is on the other side? I mean, I don't that's know, again, like, like we're, that's in, in, in school, like com you know conversation we need to be having with the, the school the school yeah. about like you know that and all discipline mm -hmm. options for them but like what you know we're here talking about today is more it sounds like self-esteem yeah. and mm -hmm. and wellness it, on, like on a whole we know mental health is cru crucial from yeah. what you're saying right to like substance like you know use and or abstaining from substance mm -hmm. use, right? So if we're, but there's other aspects of wellness too yeah, that sure. we can so be addressing great. as a community yeah. by, by uh, like you're saying, offering them accessibility to opportunities that where they can have experiences that they can see are like healthy, yeah. fulfilling right. alternatives to yeah. Yeah. drug yeah. and alcohol yeah. and vaping. Yeah. 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 They can find who they are. Yeah. So yeah. one of the yeah. major yeah. problems with so people is finding who they are, yeah. right? Yeah. And saying, hey, you know, I might not fit. I feel like I fit here, but I really don't. Where do I fit? And where is it okay for me to go and mm -hmm. be? Yeah. That isn't necessarily the norm that everybody else has. Mm -hmm. right? And I think that we have, you know, it's clearly what we've lost is our children have lost the ability to use nature as we had it, oh, right? Yeah. To what's out yeah. there and understanding. Most of the kids have no conception of what they have available here on the island and is opening up and saying, look, th there's this whole great area here that you can be a part of. And it doesn't matter what part of it you are, mm -hmm. you can find yourself here, mm -hmm. you know, and it's opening it up and building maybe mentorships within these different organizations mm -hmm. where people are seeing each other and saying, hey, um, I'm great at this, or I want to do this, but you're doing it at a very young age. You know, I don't, you know, it's simple. I had kids, kids went in every spectrum. I've been a hands-on mom, like hands-on mom. I coached, I did absolutely everything one could do. Doesn't mean I didn't run into the problem, oh, yeah. but I was there. And I mean, I parented like you wouldn't believe, but it happens. And oh, yeah. so I think that what we have to do is say, but one of the key things I realized is like my older kids were so in touch. They didn't have TV. They didn't right. have anything. And those kids still to this day, they travel the world. They do stuff and they're never afraid to say, and, you know, I'm blessed that one of my grandchildren is growing up and that's what he's doing. He's like out exploring and seeing the world is that we have so much social media has made played a major part in our children's lives here is a way of showing even parents that social media is not necessarily, you know, ways that we can guide ourselves away from so, right. some social the media. Kids don't know how to be alone, right? They don't yeah. know how to be alone. Yeah. Oh, they don't know how to self-regulate. <laughs> they they feel like they have to be entertained 24 seven by some next? device. Now what and do and that's right. because that's what's happened. So, but I wanna just say, uh, you, I'm just gonna give a little like structural piece to mm -hmm. this. So essentially what's happened from our group is we made a recommendation um, that we got, we get <laughs> to implement programs in the community. That's going to be voted on at May 6th town meeting, right? So between now and then, from a process standpoint, what we're trying to do, to do is to send all of the nonprofits some type of survey within the next 10 days that ask for some baseline data so we can collect it and have a sense of what it is everybody thinks about the situation. Number two, we would like to have a workshop, and uh, I'm just going to share the date. Um, it's on the 10th of April. It'll be hopefully in this room, Erica, from 1 to 3 p.m., where we want to work with all of you to come up with a, a vision statement. 
what it is we're trying to do as a community and the problem that we're trying to address. We are then gonna work on what, what is called an RFI, request for interest. And that would kind of gauge the number of organizations um, that we're interfacing with who are interested in receiving some of these funds and what that might be for. And then we are, we'll, we'll come up with sort of a comprehensive RFP that would be available just prior to town meeting and establish a deadline for applying for the funds. One of the um, suggestions that was made to us by the select board was that we survey probably some of the kids, right, in the community about what they're looking for and where they feel like they have either not been communicated with enough or have been communicated with maybe too much, right, and get a sense of what they feel important to them. So I think that that's kind of the process that we're trying to do. And I think today we're here because you, like us, we're all stakeholders in the community. And particularly everyone here has an, uh, an interest, a natural interest in you know, mental health and substance abuse education. And so I think that the conversation may be, you know, this, this issue is loaded with judgment, right? And I think that we have to try to suspend our oh, yeah. judgment of the yes or no, right or wrong approach and kind of think about the ways in which each of your organizations can collaborate with each other and with some funding and put forth, you know, again, this is like the, the dream session, right? What programs could you put forth that you can partner with each other or with another group that isn't represented here today that, that takes on an aspect of what we need to address in the community? So- um, Or it has a tool, has a or, readily right. available tool. right? Right, and we know that um, health imper which one's from health imperatives, the ladies on the Zoom? Emily. Yes. And <laughs> so, one of the things that we've been particularly impressed with in your group is uh, your ability to engage with uh, the different cultures that are represented on the island and be able to engage them in some type of communication. Because some of the baseline data that we've, uh, we've looked at as a, as, a, as a process of reviewing all of your grants is that that seems to be a, a community that hasn't been as well served as others in the programs that you all collectively offer. So if you guys are rep you guys are managing that in a kind of different and innovative way, then who can you partner with uh, to help model that in a different organization, right? So that you're starting to learn from each other. And I think that, you know, is there... You know, I'm thinking about you, Amanda, and Fairwinds, and thinking, is there a coach or is there a person in the community who the kids really like? And is there a way for you to collaborate with that person to create some kind of outreach? And, and you know, how, how can, what could your organization, Mike, how could you use some money to do programming at our house that would hit some aspect of this? So that ultimately what we really have done is create a community resource with some seed money to go on and start to do programs where we're getting a broader exposure. Mm -hmm. But um, we want it to be in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you say first. Mm -hmm. I, no, I, I, listening and hearing it, I see the map of we create a an umbrella program mm -hmm. which we all interface with. Some key words here were mentorship nature, wellness, mental health. So if we had a whole program that we put out there to the public um, and all of us provided individual under this program name, whatever it might be, you know, um, individual type mentorships or something along the line of what we, how we are helping the community. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, don't think it should be where each one of these groups goes out there separately and says yeah. it. It needs a whole Agreed. cohesive, Agreed. Right. you know, Agreed. That's what a radio want. station saying, this is what we're doing and thank you to all these programs. And this is how you sign up and this is what you do. I'm sorry I brought my station into it. No, but, but that's really right. Right. Station in it. But I mean, you want this. How do you see everything globally and how do you... And it sort of reminds me of the um, I Love New York campaign. Right. Okay. So, right. so we I love Nantucket. Saying. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons we love Nantucket is for the nature, is for the fact, quite frankly, I've been coming here since the 70s. You can be who you are. Right. 
Um, my son is an interesting young man and it was not easy, but I brought him up here every summer because he didn't, he got bullied and, and didn't fit in DC, Washington DC area. So here, everyone accepted him for who he was. And, and somehow we need to make that with, you know, a general, I, I'll try to think of some words of, or a play on words of what we can create. And then it's how we, all of us mm -hmm. can bring our expertise to the program. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Because right. Yeah. when exactly. you all apply for mm -hmm. grants from us, mm -hmm. your individual organizations get money from the CRC. Right. And this is an opportunity for the CRC to take a leadership role in creating a collaboration yes. amongst everybody. And amongst this is everybody. a great opportunity. Right. And, and, and so we feel reach, like, oh, sorry. Yeah, we want to reach the entire population. Yes. Yes. And um, we were talking health imperatives has a connection to um, our more recent immigrant population that could be a really good um, hook because, um, you know, I, I, one of our previous meetings, you know, I remember saying that, you know, our parents deal with more than say an off island. Um, we have multiple jobs. We have kids that have to go home because they may have to do babysitting mm -hmm. because their parents are working multiple jobs or they may need to go home because they have to help dad or mom get the job done by tomorrow. So we need to be very cognizant of reaching everybody and uh, it may not be a one approach. It's got to be a multifaceted approach that we're looking at. Well, and I just, I just oh, want to um, jump back to, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, who mentioned a needs assessment or communicating with the youth. And I think that's so important. And I think maybe doing that in a couple different ways by, you know, maybe creating some focus groups or needs assessments in multiple languages with different youth groups. I think it's really important that we hear from them because we may have the best ideas and I think they're the key to this. Um, I think we need to really make that a, um, a very important part of this process of hearing from the youth. And so I just wanted to echo that. I think it's so important. And I think we often um, ourselves as adults have the answers and, and I think it's just, we sometimes miss the, um, miss the boat because they are coming from a very different perspective than we are. And I think if we could do that, also reaching some of those youth that are more vulnerable and may, um, you know, English may be their second language or, or all of those, you know, LGBTQIA plus communities really like looking at the different groups and um, tailoring a needs assessment or focus group and just listening to them, hearing from them. I think that would be so important. I think if you could find, you know, leaders that are leaders within their own community that are passionate about helping kids or helping, you know, older teens to help kind of lead these discussions. I mean, I always wear my hat with minors is that, you know, you have to get the parents permission when you give them a um, something to fill out. And that can be a barrier, but I think there's a way you can do it where you can find from the parents and the kids where, I mean, I can think of this one woman, she's actually on our board at Fairwinds and she's a newer addition. She works at the school system. She's amazing. And she immigrated here. She has this natural ability just to tap, like, to have these kids just come to her and like come to her house and like, she'll feed them. And, you know, I know I was just telling her about this and she was just, you know, she's willing and wanting to help. And she's like, it's a huge problem. And like, she works in the middle school and she's like, you know, Spanish speaking, I mean, you just need those key people that can kind of help get us the people that we need to like have the discussions with. Yeah. That's one of the key reasons um, the health imperatives has mm -hmm. on staff is Spanish and Portuguese mm -hmm. speaking. And they really built up a great relationship within the community. And that's one of the key things they can bring, you know, like mm -hmm. instead of it being interpreted over Right. radio yeah. you know yeah. over yeah. a phone yeah. we have a human being that's talking with us that you can relate to and jericho you don't you don't have to put your hand up no i know I just, <laughs> it wasn't pressing it's just something i wanted to circle back to I, I i agree with emily that you absolutely need to get the children involved in developing this art like yeah. their mm -hmm. their um their view on it um i know that that is time consuming logistically difficult due to the location of children and the requirement to get permission do does there, I'm certain there exists this data already, though there are the pride surveys that are done pretty regularly at the school. Are there other existing sources of data that we can pull from while we're getting 
together the focus groups because the timeline is relatively compressed. Right. Well, the prior survey was done a few years ago, so it's. I mean, in actuality, those things really have changed. Yeah from the private survey. So I feel that, you know, if there's some way we can reach out and we have to remember, it's not just school age kids. Mm -hmm. We have That's to be able to reach out to this whole broader spectrum. Mm -hmm. And how do we do it? I mean, I mean, we're seeing, yeah, I mean, we're seeing like 18 year old, 19 year old, newly diagnosed bipolar who are self-medicating. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this great success story of this young man who grew up on the island and, you know, took a break and he's back at college, but he's now sober. He's doing a sober group at college. You know, like he knows what it was like to live here. And like for so long, you know, he was just self-medicating because of the symptoms. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to say with the survey, I mean, you know, Fairwinds in the hospital, you know, we hired the GPS group, the government department solutions to do an overview of all like the programs on the island and the issues. And they did reach out to the community. So I mean, we have that data and that's only from like within two years. That would be very helpful. No, so I think all these things, this is, this is that, what, you know, this is what this is about. Yeah, this is about coming up with what is, what's going to work and how can we actually make a long-term difference. And instead of what usually happens is, and this is the nature of the beast, is you're all usually competing for the same money to get a program, right? What we're trying to do is saying to you guys, now we need to compete for the community. And now we need to come up with something together that you don't have to compete for, but you're working to with, beat this. Yeah. Well, this you know? is wonderful. And back to Michael's point, I think, um, well, two things. First, the multicultural point. We've discussed that as, at Addiction Solutions have really wanted to do something on that front. And we, you know, just a very small step was having Michael over at our house that helped and meeting with Maria Partita. And mm -hmm. I went up, she asked me individually, not addiction solutions, but to come over and speak with the, with the Hispanic leadership group. And that was a door that was open, which we had hoped to do more work with. And so this is perfect because mm -hmm. this, this has all the, you know, health imperatives, all of you that have worked with this demographic because that we are very interested in that even though you know medicated assisted treatment is the main thing the community is the main thing we're, you know for us the other to michael's point about the parents i will say that i'm kind of one of those old school people and that you know you generally start think you do think you know it starts at home and i think what starts at home is the love and care um because when quinn would go to the panel meetings in california when he was in treatment the first thing he would say is, I come from a loving family. And he said this because so many people didn't. And it still happened to him. But he said to me, he said, you know, mom, the people I feel worse, the worst, you know, um, sadness for are the people that don't have the support early on from the time they, they grow up through this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to that point, I think the parents, reaching the parents somehow to help them know how to be more supportive. I mean, I'm not yeah. as yeah. eloquent, no, an eloquent I, speaker at all, but, 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 but I think else, you know what I'm talking about. They need to be, the parent, they need to be taught that. Yes. You may not yes. be taught that, or you may have some knowledge, but it's hard to connect with a kid when there's all this social pressure, you know, from social media, and then they're going to school and they're learning these things. You know, I was just talking to somebody about a kid, you know, who's on ADHD meds and is doing so much better that he's learning from his peers about, you know, oh, you want to get off your meds on the weekend because then you can kind of have more fun and be that person that you are, you know, the happy, the lucky guy. And it's like, you know, it's, they're the ones that are teaching each other. So it's really getting to those kids and, you know, giving the tools to the parents, you know, and then, but I think we have to, and any more things to do. Like, I think our house, sorry, is amazing. Boys and Girls Club is amazing, but there's not enough to do on this island for, you know, so they kind of gravitate. Oh, they just, they're but there is, I mean, that's the problem. The problem is there is, right. it's whether or not we find it and go out and no, do it. it. Yes. And that's a good excuse to say there isn't, but in actuality, there are things. And yes, I mean, the reality is our school system, our school was built. I mean, I was one of the people when that out of like seven people in the room, when then we passed these yeah. buildings being built, um, mm -hmm. it was built as a community center. It's no longer the community yeah. center. We need a community center. We need the community need. center. Yeah. Need so that's where it so got its funding. You know, it got, yes. it got its funding to be that, but times have changed. Some of that due to, you know, what's happened in the world around us, right? And so we don't have that community center yeah. and we really need that. And, and so these are things that we're hoping is that we can say as a community, we are going to find a way to make this a, a safer and better place for our kids to grow up, yes. right? We want our children yes. 
and we want our children to be healthy and we want them to make it. And yeah. it takes a lot of work. The other thing that comes in the component is, and, and part of the issue that's happened in the community, whether we're not going to address it or not, I clearly address it in my reports, if you read them, is our community has changed. It has had the greatest growth of any community for three decades, mm -hmm. the largest growth in all of Massachusetts for three decades in a row. That kind of impact within a community is so major. And culturally, the change, what we have to also acknowledge is that for culturally, our, our set of standards are different than some of the cultures that have come into our community. Oh, yeah. And so when we talk about some of the parenting and some of that, it has some of that has to do with the change in what their cultural beliefs are yeah. about some of these things. And so I think that there's so many different variables yeah. that we have to look at. We have to look at the impact of you can't grow 52%. We grew another 1.7% over a year in our population. We can't continue to grow that and not have these problems right. unless we find a way to work on all of this. You know? I think respect is where you start. Mm -hmm. You know, start with respect. And Michael's got some, I'm sure. No, I, I just was going to reiterate um, that the it's harder what i was what i was trying to say earlier is it's harder for parents today than it's ever been yeah. because there are so many competing um challenges whether it's social media whether it's alcohol whether it's um both parents working or or single parenting or whatever there are just so many challenges on this island and i think you were saying mm -hmm. the challenges are greater here mm -hmm. i think we all pretty much recognize that because they're isolated no, yeah it's fine but, we're isolated and, and that's so huge. we have to develop things on island we can't <clears throat> always look to off-island solutions right. for the right. on-island problems yes. right um, Holly McGowan told me that she had a young um, Hispanic mother call her asking about where to go for to look for housing. She and her young daughter were losing housing. And Holly said she called ASAP because she didn't know where to turn. Mm -hmm. And so Holly and I were, Holly was saying, we need a community center. And I said, yeah, we do. We're, it's one stop shopping. You go in and you ask you know, where do I go for this? Where do I go for that? Yeah, but I mean, a community, when I say community center, I think we need a place that also has adult oh, education. Oh, yes. 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 right. And I mean, I but think the that the information, yes, that the information, the information is stepped up to the back. And then what Darby said. Yeah, just have that information as a small part of that. And I think but, we're working, I think the town is working has a long-term plan and hopes yeah. to get everything okay. under one roof. Um, it's It'll be 10 years before we have anything like that. Yeah. Right. No, I agree agree with way, just thanks. realistically, yeah. it will be. I mean, regardless, yeah. if, uh, there's support for it, I agree. Yeah. But with the way all the building projects go and, and the rest of the issues facing right. the town, but if we, it's not right. to know that it's, it's right. there's no, not a stupid. house. We need I think, well, yeah, if I think oh, the behavioral that health initiative that's been oh, going on, did, did but, you know, we started with Fairwinds and NAMI and the hospital. So we have GPS so come in. I mean, the whole vision eventually is to have a one-stop shop yeah. where you can go to health imperatives. You can go to Safe Place. You can go to Fairwinds get your counseling. Like there's one medical record system. There's one release of information. So you're not having to retell your story everywhere you go. Right. You know, like we're even learning by the parents taking over crisis. It's like we see people anywhere in the community. We see people at the hospital, two different medical record systems. Right. So we're constantly having to look at both yeah. systems, get the same story and do all these releases. And it's hard for that person. Like you don't want to be asked again to sign a piece of paper. And so like we have to make the system better. Oh, and I think, you know, mm -hmm. it's the behavioral health piece, but then it's also the community piece. And it's like, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, we all have to come together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. You have to put your egos aside. And we're all playing in the same sandbox, you know, and but you know, and empower numbers. Like I think we can do more. And I think also educating the community that this is like an ongoing issue. All these people that come here in the summer oh, have yeah. these beautiful houses that are only here for X amount of time. They have a lot of money. They're all dealing with similar problems. You know, it's like how do we get the more of the community involved, the summer people and like people that live here around. And I'll make this very short. Um when Quinn was in treatment, he went to Gosnell for two weeks and then he went on to Falmouth. And there was a lady there from Nantucket, have no idea who she is. She lived overseas, I won't say where. Um, and 
she and this other man that had been in prison for 17 years, but I'll put that aside. I'm just talking back to Nantucket. She took Quinn under her wing, along with this guy that had just gotten out of prison. And um, she said, you don't belong here, Quinn. You don't belong here. She said, but, and I'm going to, I'm going to help you because she was from Nantucket and, mm -hmm. and um, she's the one that got Quinn to go on. I mean, we were trying, of course, as our, fa as his family, parents, but it was this woman from Nantucket that got Quinn to go on to that next piece. So we went to California for about a year and a half. But anyway, I mean, you know, just back to Nantucket again, yeah. someone you wouldn't expect at all to be right. in a program that right. Summers here yeah. was in Falmouth. Right. So Because we have to be mindful that it's whoever steps foot on Nantucket that really right. yeah. gets yeah. services mm -hmm. because um, they can impact our our what we would call our year-round residents. Yes. You know, yeah. so it's really everyone. Mike, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I okay. Thank you. Sorry, I've got another. I'll see you soon. That's okay. Thank you. No, thank I you. Look forward to the ten. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And I would assume that somebody will reach out to the schools. Well, the the schools are going to be invited to a different one. Okay. Okay. Right. They're every school is being invited right. to a different right. one. Right. Yeah, I think that's wonderful that you're including like the private mm. school because yeah, because it, there are issues issue. everywhere. Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, it's all, we're inviting yeah, we're daycare facilities. No, no, it's, it's great. It's, it's start, it starts it's starts young. young. Great. Yeah. yeah, it has to be. We yeah. have to start yeah. this young. Yeah. If we don't, because kids because are those, saying things at home. That's thank what I was you. Say, and they see behavior, and then you're like, "This is oh, this is how mommy copes or my grandma copes. I'm going to yeah. do the same thing." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I think, yeah. and then really the buy-in from like, and you're right, health imperatives have done, I mean, we share space. They've done an amazing job just from mm -hmm. a cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, this affects every culture. And it's like, we have to get leaders from the community, you know, even from the churches that people connect to, to help us spread the message. Yeah. The biggest thing though, and statistically wise, it's affecting our native kids more than it's mm -hmm. affecting the other yeah. culture, yeah. which yeah. everybody has to remember. <laughs> They're the ones that this change in culture yeah. Is actually affecting the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Those are the it's numbers. Definitely, definitely <laughs> that makes sense, that. Though. right? Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's just affecting them more. I mean, I'm not ruling everybody. Well, they're out. seeing no. the change. They're they're like it's they're marked. It's marked change for it's that. Marked, yeah. It's changed their lives yeah, and the way they change. everything you know that they their whole community has changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we sometimes forget about that. I mean, we look at all the cultures, and that's really important. But in actuality, the numbers are higher in our our kids yeah. than they are anywhere else. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you really, I think it's important that we keep that. No, you're right. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. Don't you, Liz? Yeah. I think this is really exciting. I'm excited. And we had one, we had one mom that just decided she'd have enough and that yeah. this yeah. is what happened. Yeah. Well, I know about it. It's That's not me. Wonderful. <laughs> I was going to ask, have you talked to the parents? Have you, it sounds like a mom reached out, so, but I think also oh, talking yeah. to the parents. Idea. A mom that yeah. saw a problem Great. Yeah. would have to be addressed. But I think about also, I think I shared with you, Dorothy, it was, you know, there was a, a thing on social media I saw from, about a dad when the school called that emergent meeting about the bathrooms a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and everyone went there, and it really isn't the plumbing problem. He's like, the elephant in the room is the drug problem. Mm -hmm. and like how are we going to help like solve that but i don't think it's a drug problem and maybe yeah. that's a social media problem yeah. i mean the he, toilets were social media yeah. right it's a tiktok thing but i mean yeah. it's a tiktok, it's TikTok but i mean TikTok. he said drugs but i think it goes back to like you got to get the parents buy in but you, you know, got to get them to, the kids to understand too yeah. is that in that whole thing of that tiktok was guys you 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 are just stewards in this building. You don't have a right to do it. So it's right. understanding the value of community. Yeah, I, I mean, I think all that has just all become very convoluted. And now what's happened is you have a group of parents who what's happened what's happened has become very polarizing, right? Because you have a group of parents who feel like you know they they're encouraging other parents to drug test their kids, and it's this whole judgment and value yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. And you have other parents who feel like, well, I'm being judged if I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then you have other parents who are entirely permissive, right? right? And so what's happening is that regardless of what you're doing, you're being judged yeah. by the people who feel the gold standard is that you should be yeah. drug testing your children. Right. And I'm not going to be bullied no. by those no, parents no, either. No, no, no. no. But right. I know that I mean, goes back to the same thing happens with medication. Yes. Yeah. When Quinn was in, you know, maybe middle school, he, he um, 
started to take ADHD medicine. He was dyslexic and he, mm -hmm. he, and he, um, it, he didn't like the way it made him feel. And we tried to a couple of different ones and just couldn't quite, but he played sports. He was outside a lot. So he really, you know, but also there was a lot of, I heard a lot from a lot of different people, you know, whether in the school, out of the school, don't give Quinn that he'll have a heart attack when he plays lacrosse. Don't do this. <laughs> the, the children, his children will be messed up. I mean, you can't imagine. It's no, no, and it's, and it's yeah. back to the judgment. And I, I didn't, I, you'd see one doctor say this, one say that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I, I there's thought, no well, one right answer. And I'm not saying like meds is the right answer. I mean, I think. No, but they, also, they're great. I mean, I think. For some people, they're great. Home, for some so people. It would have been great if you come home from California. But I think anyway, people, I just, and I look at all these, you know, we have gyms on the island. Like, can't true. they do more for the kids to be able to go? I mean, a big barrier is the financial cost. Yes. Yeah, like, how right. do I go and right. go to the gym and work out if I'm a teenager? That's right? what, and when right. you live off island, you can go to the Y for like $5 a yeah, month. Exactly. We agree. Yeah. Can we get the Nantucket gym and, like, you know, the. But maybe the school opens up the gym. Yeah, no kidding. You know, like, that's the gym, and you're not allowed to use it unless there's a teacher in there. Right, which is well, a big, huge issue. issue. Exactly. They have volunteers that are coordinated that can go and be exactly. there. So that, that is the, this, that out. is a this very is very good it's idea. Like opening yeah. up this the the building again as, yeah, as, as a exactly. community school, yeah. Yeah. which is was it was funded to be a community building. That's right. where we got the funding for right. that room, right. and I can promise right. you that because I was one of the yeah. there was only a handful of us. But what would be incredible is if we could if we could partner a peer counselor to be the gym monitor. Right, so that that person right. was there and able to be the mentor. Yeah. The mentor, and yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. That, that's the matchup. The other thing is like, right. say, I mean, like Kevin, I know of a young kid who likes to work with his hands in construction. I'm having the hardest time trying to find someone in this construction business to help mentor this kid. Really? Right. Yeah. Had him, you know, but it's just shocking because people are like, I don't want to take that on. I'm like, he's a good kid. He just what, needs okay. to be I'll, I'll talk to you about this after. Okay. But I'm just saying, I mean, we need to This is what we want. All these this different right. groups. Say, exactly. you know what? What can you do to keep these kids busy? Like they want to work with their hands. They want to get into trades. Like start yeah, them out yeah. and they'll volunteer. Yeah. Or pay them a Mentorship little bit. Program like, and internship, internship, internship program. Yes. Internship. But it's even, it's also, I think it's more of a, um, you don't want to call it an internship or a mentorship. It's just them feeling and finding Self -exploration. their place. Right. Right. They're like, finding right, their yeah. place. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people that are willing to do it because we've had, like, I've had a lot of feedback from people that are, really behind what we want to do mm -hmm. and the idea of what we want to do yeah. it's just our job is we have to sell it i think if we give it a title we right a title. if we give it a title yeah. or give it a name they're going to buy in too yeah so you're that's what we're doing here yeah you're you're giving it funding and you're giving it like a, you're giving it a title that they can buy into and yeah. go i'm a part of this program mm -hmm. not just i'm taking on some kid and mentor but i'm yeah, part yeah, of a program yes. you know yeah. you know and so i think that that's going to really help with getting people to get involved in the program and it's going to be really important is that we have every single stakeholder invest yeah. in it for all the right reasons mm -hmm. that they want to be in it and they understand right. that you know we're going to have to fight for money we're going to have to fight to keep the program going we're going to have to look at funding mm -hmm. tools to keep this going right but in the long run this is the one time we're saying to you know we don't want you all fighting over the little amount of money we have we want mm -hmm. you coming together mm -hmm. and together we can make a huge difference yeah. in this yeah. community right. yeah. mm -hmm. and you all have such great things to bring to the table right. and you know and that's we see that every time you come here you know right. yeah. we're blown away by what everybody is capable of doing but now for the first time we're saying to you guys you know what do it together you yes. got to do it together because if you right. did it together the things you can do yeah. are going to be amazing right. and I think once we can get that going we can get everybody else underneath us to see the possibilities that are right. so amazing in this community. And it'd be great to do something like if just with the summer coming up and more people being here to like educate people and get some support. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's, I know it's hard. There's so many, everyone's so busy, but to come think of some way, like even like a fundraiser or something. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, Cause we're gonna run and run. Good luck, Amanda. <laughs> No, but I know. Well, we're we're running on we're running a little bit late on yes. on time, yeah. and there and there could be something. There could be a lots of ways of reaching out. You know, you too. you could. Yeah. There's some valuable tools in the community to do it. Um, oh, there but we're at the table people. in front of our <laughs> race. <laughs> Yeah. or something oh, and what we're doing and you know you know it's out votes and ask them to add 50 cents on every ticket to go to the community health awareness yeah, yeah. oh yeah um april 10th 
Um, we would like you all to come back and we want you to come back to us with ideas yep. on how we can put this together yeah. and how this can, this, your ideas, how each one of you, what you can bring to the table and what you believe this, the possibilities of this are, so that when we go out to write our RIF, RIF, RFI, we have that we have input. had this collaborative effort between the town and you guys to pull this Wonderful. off. That's good. Sounds great. Okay. Well, thank you. For so we thank want you. all your feedback, okay, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yes. We're all in. Okay, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. And thank, thank you for your talent. Everyone brings something to the table. Me, but what I mean is, this is a really great group. Thank you. Really great group. Thank you for including us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You need anything else from now? I mean, thank you. Thank you. Can you keep it on for the next one? We're winding. We still, yeah, we're going to yeah. wind down. We're going to wind down. So you guys can say or you can leave. We're going to just kind of close yeah. down and say, yeah. okay. Okay. No, so I'll find the track. Good to see you. Oh, I got you. Thank you. This is great. This is really exciting. I think it's the right direction. Yeah, to fill the gap oh, that we have, uh, okay. that we're experiencing, okay. filling the major gap. Okay. That's Thank our you. hope. Is. Look forward to it. it. Now that like, here's what she looked like. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. It's nice to see you in person because I always see you. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Jericho's always nice to see you. Always a great, good. Always a good time. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Thank you for coming, ladies. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. So the one thing that um I and we we spoke with uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to have my we spoke we spoke with Gosnold everybody I think that we should um, make a motion on their two current uh, bills that have not been paid so that we can um pay that and get that cleared off and, and do we done. have to I think we should okay. I mean I think yeah. they've done I think we should and and then I think we move on to the, the next phase. We did, they did fulfill the, our request of them for reimbursement for the previous motion. So I do think we probably we, did, we, um, Okay, just, I was just a question. Yeah. So I would like to um, put that out there, everybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Make a motion to approve and pay. Quarter one and quarter two. Quarter one and quarter two for gospel. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, uh, Joanna. Aye. Linda, sorry. Aye. <laughs> Veronica, don't put it in your mouth. Aye. Enjoy the eye. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think what we have to do is uh, when it talks about invitations here, the invitation on this agenda, that would be that we actually um, just make a formal, we've told these people, let's make a formal invite to them for the April 10th um, meeting. Um, I know CPR. I know. And then I know April ninth is that the is April thirteenth the one that we were going to invite others to come in? The tenth. The tenth. No, the tenth is when they're coming in. The vision workshop. The vision workshop with the grant writer. The thirteenth is we're gonna. No, the grant writer is going to come meet up with us next week on the fourth. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> the tenth is is the grant writer going to come on the tenth too? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so the, the vision workshop. I'm okay. happy to do that, by the way. The vision. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. The 13th. I have a whole. I do this all the time. The Don't worry. When you said it, it was your baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The 13th. I guys, would like. Sorry, please go ahead. The basis for the 13th is. I think we have to keep building working. the RFI. Mm -hmm. what I have building the RFI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've got. Fourth is grant uh, grant discussions with the grant writer. Thirteenth is CF, uh, is RFI building. And tenth, we have the tenth too. Tenth was a, sorry. Tenth was a visioneering meeting. Yes. Thirteenth yes. was the RFI building. Mm -hmm. Do we skip the seventeenth, the twenty-first? Yes, school vacation right. week. 
and then final RFP output for to out, uh, RFP ready for feedback on the 24th. So can I ask something? Do we do we do we attempt this questionnaire that you're talking about before um, these dates? Yeah, I think with we, the kids. Oh, I don't know how we're going to deal with the kids. I think that that's a whole other issue. Okay, because you brought it up. So I do. It is. I, I think we have to do something, but I don't. I yeah. think that. I think we have to come talk to the school. I think the school. Maybe the school needs to come talk to us on the. Yeah, 15th. and I think Mike oh. was was very sensitive to that. That how come school yeah. isn't at this table at this so the point? Isn't but at the table because we because, haven't invited any of the schools. Right. So I have right. spoken to Sherry Shoulder about this as part of the MBHI, and I made the announcement at the most recent MBHI leadership that this was a possibility. And what is Sherry Shoulder is the student yeah, support coordinator. She's basically the the supervisor of all of the non educational stuff that happens with students. Um, Isn't that funny? They consider this non-educational. Go on. I mean, I think it's just yeah. Um, but yeah, the um, so uh, she's aware of this, so this is this doesn't blindside her. Um, additionally, uh, I've expressed that we may ask her to contribute and participate in this in some capacity. That's all I've done. I wrote her. to Mandy and said I'd like to meet with you and just have a chat, and I was just going to tell her about this whole thing, but I haven't heard back from her. And I will reach out again. And then I know that there, as I had mentioned to Dorothy, there's someone in the high school who runs, um, like he's the study skills advisor for mm -hmm. anybody who's on an IEP or has behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. And he is interested in working on this. Okay. He wanted to come to, the, he wants to come to a meeting. What is this talk? person's name? His name is Andrew Vaselli. Okay. So Sherry's his boss. Yeah. So, so I think that I think that what we have is we have a lot of um, valuable tools. Yeah. Besides this four, which I think we need to call in. I think we need to call in everybody that has to do with education. Yep. Within the, yep. the community with yep. our kids. I think so too. Um, even the community school, you know, like get them in. Alicia. Yeah. Boys and Girl Club. Yeah. We we had uh, Fernando Jones from there. He would be probably the reach out point for Boys and Girls Club. Um, I mean, I think Chinese. we could bring these people to the to the visioning workshop. We should. So if if 10th is going to be the visioning workshop, then we should get our invite list together as quickly as we can. Yep. And um, where's my notes? Once the grant writer confirms the day, maybe that day it's one hour with her and maybe the other hour we invite the school and like community school and the other educational people. That would come. be April 4th. Mm -hmm. So if you can find that out, I'll find we, out can, we, can do, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And then we can do like what we just did with them. Yep. And then they can be included in the visioning center and maybe the vision, because really if the visioning group is like 25 people, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's some different, like we could break up into groups. Right. We need a different room. Well, or we could need it set up differently. It's not going to happen. Really? Well, yeah. We, we have enough work. tables. We just yeah, need we to can, have tables and work. chairs, okay. right? Depending we'll on how people, people, right? Yeah. We, we can pull off a wedding at the chicken box. We can make this one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right? Um, Jericho, we're going to need like big pads and markers. Right there. Okay. Yep. More of those. More of those. Yep. Depending on how, if we have, because you're going to need one of those for every five people. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's doable. Um, Sorry, Bert just wrote to me, guys. So just gonna... then um, we can even take it and tack it on the walls. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, you don't I need think, to have a uh, whatever. Yeah. I think I got a stack of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just letting you know because we're gonna. Uh, what I think I would like to do is this thing called Crazy Eights, and no. basically it's each group will come up with the eight best ideas mm -hmm. and then they'll narrow it down mm -hmm. they'll come up with eight ideas and then you'll go to four then they'll go to two mm -hmm. and then everybody every group will share two mm -hmm. so by this friday the 31st we want to have survey. from the members survey questions aimed for nonprofit service providers and schools i think and they schools. should go to the schools, schools. um we should but we have to decide on what those questions are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so that will decide on for on April 10th. We can, no, April 4th. 4th, 4th. We can decide we'll on what those questions. The questions. Okay. 
So that should be on the agenda for April 4th is to finalize the questions. We'll get them all to let's, end by this Friday, the 31st. Let's, can, do we have two minutes to iron out the agenda right now for the fourth meeting? Yeah, because first? I'm going to be, uh, I'm off until Monday. So I'd like to get, we can let, get this posted it's as soon luck. as we can. No, it's not. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a fun. I wish, yeah, it's not a good, I can say that. Um, <laughs> I told people I can say that. Okay. Um, so we are going to have, we're going to discuss the questions. Yeah, because I have to go, as soon as I go over there, I'm going to have to make sure we can get the Zoom and the room. Yep. Okay. So Monday, and the, agenda, so right? so the fourth would be the, the questions, then it would be the grant grant presentation with the presentation with the writer mm -hmm. okay. well we want to say uh or discussion with writer discussion yeah. mm -hmm. discussion with grant writer and then volunteer right volunteer grant writer yeah right finish. right <laughs> just to cover ourselves here uh and then uh the third thing would be a discussion with um school type representatives. So you that you want them do the four or after? I think we should do them before and then have the grant writer come in. Okay. Then so we'd have the feeling of both groups. So okay. then the fourth fine with me. the fourth would be the grant I'm uh, sorry, the grant would be grant discussion with educators. We'll just say yes, with that's a very good one. So that would be before the grant writer. Yeah. yeah. So that would switch the because I want to be respectful of her time. She's mm -hmm. expensive. So yeah, that no, means yeah. visioning meeting would be so we would do half the vision the the meeting on the tenth, which would, I'm just calling the visioning meeting. It will be half with the grant writer and half. No, no. the eighth. I mean the third, the fourth is going to be questions from the survey. Number one, number two will be we'll invite in educators to discuss this this grant idea, and then we will meet meet with the discussion with the volunteer grant writer on how to best do our R okay RIF, rfp is this RFI, person in person or no, she'll, she'll be zoom she'll be she zoom. the rfi okay. rfp she'll help with both okay so okay chat us with rfp the rfi slash RFI. Like a, like an abbreviated version of the rfp anyway so so we'll do both okay that'll be <laughs> like, on our like five narrative questions yep and then um and some sketch the and thumbnail okay, usually there's so like then. the attempt at an outline okay. I can't hear you at all. I'm just run, I'm just running through the who the who's so who the educators. I would also I know the Al's not picking up half of what everybody's saying at the moment. I would also recommend we invite artist association. Give it that. Because yep. they get because that of that vote. program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, also, yeah. well, not because of that program, they're educators. Yeah. yeah. yeah I get and, right. and that's the exact kind of program we want to be in getting in front of kids. Right. right. I mean, I I really do think we should just the school should be hiring Amanda's peer counselors to work in the weight room. I mean, that's just they there's there is a lot of resistance to outside parties interacting with yes. the school. I'd Apparently. Um, well, just so we know, like, like one of the greatest things about this is that there's some of these organizations have some great grant money right now that have been not been able to bring into the school. And they can use that grant money to write and do some of these programs outside of this. So when we're looking at this, there's funds. I know of some funds right now, a substantial amount of funds that are sitting there in for alcohol education, which could go out at every level. Mm -hmm. So that getting this together and giving mm -hmm. them some place where they could go is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. yep, it's just going to be amazing. So, um, yeah. okay. And number four is just um, unforeseen business. So, yep. <laughs> As you should. 48, just write it down. Right. Okay. Okay. I, that's, that's I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, all right. This is a good cake. It's very good. Yeah. I told you that's not a bad coffee cake, right? Or, and I threw out the box. Yeah. So something yes. <laughs> um, so okay, everybody. I'm I'm very happy with the end result of that meeting. Is everybody else? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I'd like I'd like to see Linda, I'd like prefer open mic with you if you can. And sometimes not always possible. 
Okay, but if you if you can put up if your hand it's is enough, just say she just say, you know, yeah. chair or something so I can see you, okay? Yep. Thanks. Okay. Um I have got to go. I'm I've already missed a meeting and I gotta go because I'm doing a liquor license for somebody at noon. Yeah. So I gotta go. We just need we just need a motion. I move to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh Joanna. Hi. Linda. Hi. Veronica. Hi. Just um, everybody, just so you know, you can cancel that now. Uh, Bert apologized. He had a medical procedure this 